right, hello everyone and welcome to the Happy Hour Show. This is Grandmaster Pascal Charbonneau, GM Pac-Man on uh, Chess24. And I hope uh, you will enjoy the show today. We have a couple of things going on. First, we're going to go through some of the games from uh, the Legends of Chess event. We are also going to play some Banter Blitz. Uh, I will have a surprise guest join in in about an hour, I think. We are also going to welcome... Uh, very well-known coach, uh, international master Alex Astane. He will be joining us and going through some of his, some of his favorite moments from uh, the Legends of Chess event. Uh, I'm probably going to try to play a few games against Seb, who will be joining us in a little bit. Uh, some of my guests are well. My guests are not here yet, so right now you've got me. Uh, of course, a busy day on Chess 24. Uh, Seb was working all day on the Norwegian uh, channel. He'll be joining us in just a little bit, uh, and. Um, and yeah, after that, we will have, uh, again, we have a special guest at the end. The show is going to be for about three hours. And the goal of this show is to kind of have a, a little bit of a free-for-all, do a lot of different activities, uh, entertain, uh, do some banter blitz, but also do, you know, matches one against the other with some fun commentary going on. So uh, today was an interesting day of chess and the Legends of Chess event. I... Um, I was uh, I was interested to see in particular this match between uh, Peter Svidler and Jan Nepomnesi. Um By the way, let me know if everything is okay with with my sound. You know, hopefully hopefully it is. Um, and I heard that Sebastian is just joining us. Perfect. That's great. Uh, let me. Uh, okay, I gotta fix my scene up a little bit. You know, I'm uh, I'm actually producing today, which is gonna be. Uh, which is going to be interesting for everyone involved, but I'm going to be doing my best. Hopefully, we'll be doing okay. I'm uh, I'm not always the producer, but our producer is working tirelessly right now between uh, between doing the um, between doing the uh, you know all of the production for for the Legends of Chess event. He's been helping us with this show as well. Uh, but today uh, we decided to give him the the afternoon off. I think you see. Uh, Sebastian in a shot here eating some food. That's a move that is that has been popularized by uh, by Magnus among other people. Uh, but let's you know let's maybe go through uh, a little bit of chess here uh, while uh, while Sebastian is finishing. I don't know what he was eating. Anybody can figure out what he was eating there. Uh, I I'm not too sure. Uh, but let's see here. I'm just uh, I'm going to switch the scene. And here we go. So here. Um, yeah, you know, the thing the thing with Nepomnishi is that not only does he play extremely well, but he plays incredibly, really incredibly fast. And so he's really hard to uh, he's really hard to play against. I, you know, every time I look at his games, he seems to have 10 minutes on his clocks while his opponents have no time at all. So I was going to look at, um, first of all, the first the first win, which was kind of the, the key game in the match. Uh, Sebastian, welcome, by the way. How's it going, buddy? So it's going more than 100, more than 100% for you today. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, of course. I mean, you're 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 probably going to be the main host. I'm just, you know, I'm not doing the uh, the Norwegian broadcast uh, all day, so I I, um, I figured at the beginning while we're having these huge events, I should probably uh, help out a little bit. Um, before before Alex joins us here, I figured I would. Uh, I would go through at least one game from today's uh, today's event. What did you think of today's matches, uh, Seb? Ah, there's always excitement, especially uh, there has been the last days. I think uh, I think I had you I had you on mute in the call, but now it should start to work again. I apologize apologize for that. No, At no least worries. I, I hadn't I hadn't made you talk too much, so it's not uh, it's yeah. not too bad. <laughs> it wouldn't be you know it ha we have to show that the producer is required. That's I'm I'm you know making sure yeah. that that everyone understands that it's better with a producer. Um, all right, so yeah, so the the, the matches today, Nepomnishi surprises me. Just you know, he's so fast. Like if you can actually see the clock here, that's the clock at the end of the game. He had ten minutes left. Um, yeah, it's it's. I think he's the only one of all these guys who plays like pretty much invariably fast. Sort of regardless, even if he doesn't know the opening, he plays fast. If he knows it, he plays fast, of course. And so he's he's always playing incredibly fast. Um, so. Yeah, he's and so far he's been impressive. That we, I guess, in some of the tour he had a little bit of trouble. 
Um, but but so far in this one, he's looking really convincing. So here, first of all, um, I don't really know. So I was going to go back actually a few moves when. So this is sort of a normal Chigorin position, but I feel like in the normal Chigorin, White has played H3 and D4, but here. Um, here it's it's kind of like he's wasted a tempo, but it doesn't seem to matter a whole lot. So I'm not I'm not totally sure. There's probably someone smarter than me with a deeper understanding of this position. But what I did feel is that um, so this is sort of normal Chigorin move order. Um, but here after a five, a three, and one white when white gets b four, I felt like already the position is more comfortable for white, uh, and the b four move is possible because. Uh, because of the rook on a8, you know, being th that there's a pin here, and I don't love this position for black because it seems like usually they try to get kind of counterplay on the on the queen side, which here they don't. Uh, they don't have much of, and the pawn on b5 is going to be a weakness f for kind of eternity. Um, so I didn't love this position, and then uh, the game continued, and and it didn't seem to me, it didn't seem to me like uh, like there was an easy easy moment for for black to equalize here. Uh, after after b4 so I feel like something kind of maybe should be looked at earlier it's odd though because it seems like black didn't do anything wrong uh, but the knight ending up on a6 maybe it's just this plan with knight b4 wasn't wasn't that amazing did you did you have any thought on this game uh, Seb I didn't really uh, pay that uh, any attention to it honestly it's hard, right? There, there's so many games. There's so many games going on at the same time, especially if you're doing commentary. So I'm, I, I don't have to do commentary the whole time. So I kind of pick and choose what I want to look at. Um, on your side, doing Norway, I guess uh, you were focused a lot on Magnus today. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was, and uh, I did pay attention to a lot of Kramnik's games because it's been uh, pretty exciting. Pretty what, much every uh, single day. What was the reaction the Norwegian chat at the end? We can actually show. I'll show the end of Magnus's first game here. Very last few moves. This was a crazy. This was a crazy game. The first game against uh, Vas Vas Vasily Ivanchuk here, where Magnus was basically in trouble for some of this game, and then at the very end, he's actually like totally winning, right? Yeah, yeah. It was insane, dude. And uh, so I, here, I was still sh shocked yeah. that he missed the win. Yeah, so here you had Rook F8, and this is like, for him, this would be like uh, uh, the kind of moves that, that I would think he finds in most bullet games that he plays. Um, and so, but of course, you know, with the stress, I mean, things happen all the time. He played a move that actually kind of looked winning, right? Like, I think he must have thought that the move he made was winning, because he's got like yeah, rook, yeah. rook F7 coming or something. Although Queen B2 is also okay here, you know, so, um, and somehow Black holds here, so it's not... Uh, so they, yeah, so he just, um, it's just a rare, a rare mistake because he's so accurate all the time um, that it's rare that you see that. So yeah, we're, we're the Norwegians uh, going crazy in the, uh, in the chat. Yeah, it was insane. I must say it was, uh, it was crazy stuff. Um, but I think some actually thought it was uh, uh, hilarious that Ivanchuk won <laughs> because uh, <laughs> I, I guess he kind of, in a way, deserved it because he played so well earlier. But yeah, it uh, it it was crazy. It was a crazy reaction. So. Yeah, and then he managed to pull it together and win this match. Uh, I guess this this white win was actually not so trivial either. Like Ivanchuk really gave him a, a pretty good match. I mean, this was a. I thought this was a really interesting game that he won here, but it wasn't like it was a one sided, like totally clear uh, game. And it's interesting that they got this opening twice, right? Like a weird, it's kind of a, I've never seen this variation at all. Had you seen this before? Knight FD7, I've never seen anything like yeah, that. Yeah, that, that was a weird move. Yeah, it looks, it looks like it's passive for black, but somehow he managed to kind of get like a normal position. They got this position twice today, right? Yeah, 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 they, they did. They had like an opening duel because if white, they also play the same thing like twice. I, I mean, when Magnus was, was black, he played the same thing twice. They got the same opening twice. Yeah, let's say. Like yeah, in both games. But. Yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> yeah, um, and so yeah, Magnus somehow managed to win this one, but it wasn't. Uh, I, I I thought Magnus was better, sort of all the way through, but not like not clear, and it got totally unclear at some point. Um, this was a nice kind of pawn sacrifice. Um, but yeah, it wasn't like an easy win from here, like down a pawn and, you know, you have count compensation because the knight on h6 seems really bad. But 
Uh, but it also wasn't like so easy. Um, yeah, it wasn't easy at all. It became very complicated. And I, and I think Ivan Chuk just made the G5 error. But if it, if it simply takes the pawn, it's not that bad. Yeah, so that's the position. Is, it's going to be here, I think. Yeah, here, right? You're saying? Yeah, G5 was the, mo the move. That was bad. Yeah. Yeah, so if he takes the pawn. Yeah. Yeah, this is not going to be so easy to win for white, right? Yeah, I think it's a draw if it yeah. takes and then trades the queens. Uh, takes on h6. Yeah. Yeah, so. then I guess queen h5. Yeah, so they get a position like this. Yeah, this yeah, is going to be... Yeah, it has to be a draw, right? Even do this and take that one. Yeah, there's not enough... Shouldn't be enough material here to win. Yeah, so Ivanchuk, you know, he was he was pretty close. Um, the, even the Armageddon was even the Armageddon was anything but clear, right? Like until until he blundered uh, Knight takes e4 here, he had a very good position. Um, yeah, like Queen f2 was was a big mistake, but uh, but yeah, I guess some some other moves were were still better for him. Like I know the computer gives like Queen a3, which is a bizarre move. Probably a human would not really play that, but uh, I don't know, Queen somewhere else, <laughs> maybe a human could play. Even his queen yeah, but it, I I was just baffled by how slowly they both played. Like, I was like, make a move, dude. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, twenty yeah. seconds. I, I I was like shocked. Like, it doesn't really matter what you play because you you have no time. So it's about flagging, honestly. All right, I think Alex is going to be joining us as well, which is which is cool. We have a another guest, so maybe I'll switch to to the other view here. And. Uh, <clears throat> And yeah, so Alex is joining us. He's going to be he's going to be talking a little bit about Coaches, which is our new exciting platform. Uh, it's all part of our group of companies. It's getting hard to keep track of all of them, but what do we have? We have Chess Twenty Four, uh, Play Magnus. We have Chessable and Coaches, which is uh, Coaches is going to be or is a part of Chess Twenty Four, I think, technically speaking. Uh, and Alex is going to be one of the star uh, star coaches and featured coaches on it. Uh, from what I hear, I haven't taken lesson from him, but from what I hear, he is an incredible coach. And uh, today he's going to be walking us through some some of the positions from the legends. Um, he's a he's a great man. Uh, he's actually a very good friend of mine, believe it or not. I I I, I have trouble believing it, but I'll believe you. <laughs> and the, the way it happened is kind of funny. I guess I can wait until he joins, and then I can tell the story. Sure, it's a good story. Yeah, so Alex, I think he's in the meeting. He just needs to turn on his. Uh, there, hello, here we go. Guys. Oh, there he is. Now I got to resize. Yeah, it's right there. <laughs> it's right there. Yep. So then, then I can tell the story. Yeah, let because me. I'm, I'll let you. I'll let you guys talk while I try to fix. This is a Tech Pascal here trying to fix the, uh, trying to fix the Zoom window. <laughs> so, so you guys go ahead. I'll just listen. Right. Well, I'll uh, I'll tell the story. So it all started actually when I was a little kid, but this is something you did not know, but. Uh, as a matter of fact, I became a fan of Alex when I was like, I think I was 11, right? And uh, what happened Seven. is that I heard him saying, well, I lost my game and pardon my language. I played like a fucking moron. That's what he said. <laughs> and I was like, oh man, this guy's awesome. So I started to watch his games and stuff. And I met him like six years later or something like that. I think I was 16 or 17. And we met in a tournament. And, uh, well, I actually played against him and, uh, we became good friends when, uh, we both realized that our play was absolutely abysmal. So we were, we were both in, uh, Hungary, miserable, but having a good time nonetheless. So that's how I became a good friend with Alex. Is that accurate? Uh, I, I, I'm a big part of me, Sebastian wishes it wasn't, but, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of truth. <laughs> to uh, to what you said, um, yeah. Well, but you were too humble about it. We actually, you said that we both played abysmally. But if I recall correctly, in Budapest, you actually played a a beautiful game. It was uh, round one of one of these famous first Saturday tournaments. It was my first first Saturday. I think it was also yours. Uh, it was um, my second. Actually, it was your second first Saturday. Yeah, and you just wiped me off the wiped me off the board. Well, thank you, but I went. Uh... And went downhill from there. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and I remember, I remember the first words he said to me straight after, uh, straight after it was, uh, I mean, I was so horrified. I had traveled there. I was just, you know, when you make this like big journey to a tournament and you figure, oh, I want to make a norm. And then the first thing I do, I just lose this horrible, horrible game. And straight after it, you know, you shook my hand and you gave me a great handshake and you said, listen, Alex, I'm a big fan of yours or something like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, just wanted to, I just wanted to hide. And that was hilarious. But it, it was great though. <laughs> yeah, and, and after that, we hung out for the, for the rest of the tournament. And only a couple of months later, uh, I went to where my family's from originally, from like a little, little area of Spain that, uh, that, that most people just don't know about. And I went to this little village tournament and who do I see there? But uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sebastian Mihailov himself, and yeah, that, that was great. That was great. So a little bit internal, but the rave incident still cracks me up. When, uh, cracks me up when I think about it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's internal. But it's still hilarious to think of. Like. <laughs> All right. How is well, uh, how's how are things uh, how are things uh, going on the show? So far, so good. We just got we just got started here. It's a little bit uh, today. I'm producing, which usually won't be. So there's some funny angles on the on the screen today. But uh, I assure you, these will be much much better uh, next week. But otherwise, everything is going is going all right. We just went through uh, a little bit of today's uh, today's action very quickly. Um, and uh, Alex, should we speak a, a, a little bit about Code Chess, which is just sort of starting to launch? Do you want to give us a, a brief overview of what's going on there? Uh, yeah, so I'll just um, I'll just say that uh, basically Coaches is um, it's Coaches.com for anybody who's who hasn't uh, checked it out yet. And uh, basically, the idea I think was born out of the fact that up until now, uh, you know, websites, chess websites, they've they've been mainly focused on making sure that users you know, enjoy playing, you know, a game of chess, casual game, or watching uh, some of the major tournaments. And that seems to me kind of the main focus, right? Either playing or watching the big uh, tournaments. But coaching itself has been sort of sidelined uh, until now. And most of the time on websites, you've got these different directories, um, little coaching directory uh, across different ones, but you don't have a dedicated place for, uh, for coaches and for students and I think that Coaches, uh, Coaches' intention is to sort of to bridge, uh, to bridge that gap. And um, it's it's only recently launched, so there's there's a, it's a work in progress. But um, but well, you guys, I'm sure you guys have checked it out, and anybody uh, who hasn't can go check it out. But I, I think already it's a it's a really nice product, and it's sort of offering a, a smoother, more streamlined experience for for both students and for coaches. Um, yeah, no, that sounds uh, that sounds very good. Uh, and uh, what is what is your role there as sort of one of the uh, one of the featured uh, coaches? Uh, yeah, so well, we're actually bringing a lot of different initiatives together at the moment. The focus is on the uh, World Schools Chess Championships, uh, which is uh, Chess Twenty Four is doing a lot of coverage for. So at the moment, we're coordinating um, from Monday to Friday. We're going to have some co chess coaches actually give lessons. Uh, online on a variety of different topics week by week uh, from now until uh, late November. So that's actually Monday to Friday. You can catch that. It is uh, mainly aimed at a junior level, uh, both in terms of rating. Most players will be under 1,500 or so in strength and will be under 16 years of age. But it's a huge, huge initiative in partnership with uh, Julius Barr. And, um, and that's, you know, that's really that's a huge thing that we're doing at the moment. Um, uh, it's uh, this first week. What I wanted to say about it actually is that um, we're going to be focusing, we're going to be tying the World Schools Chess Championships with Co Chess and with also uh, the Legends of Chess Tournament. We're going to be covering from Monday to Friday a different uh, legend of chess um, as part of uh, as part of these shows, and it's going to be in two languages, in English and Spanish. So that's a whole lot of detail, but hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully it, uh, it makes some sense. If not, check that out on uh, um, every day. It's usually at 8 p.m. Central European time. 
Cool. No, that sounds that sounds good. So now today, today, did you want to walk us through uh, something something chess related, or um, or we'll just keep making jokes with uh, Sebastian here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I wanted to show a couple of a uh, couple of funny positions. You guys were saying just before I joined how it's quite difficult to keep track. There's so many games, so many different events uh, going on these days. Uh, but there is, uh, I did select a couple of positions. One of them, Pascal, you actually. Uh, drew my attention to from uh, from the tournament, um, from the Legends of Chess tournament that's ongoing. And I wanted to show them because I thought they were just very nice positions, nice tactical opportunities. In one case, uh, it was a variation that could have happened, uh, but but did not. And in another, it, uh, it happened almost the same uh, as in the game, but I think even nicer what Magnus Carlsen missed. And I was thinking, actually, I might test Mr. Mihailov on these positions, if uh, if he's up for the challenge. Seb, are you up for the challenge? Otherwise, it's going to be me. Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm. Uh, well. Well, I guess I guess I'm up for it. Uh, Mr. Mihailov. Okay, so the first thing I am going to see in this position, I don't know if you guys are able to actually see my screen at the moment. Oh yeah, I can see it. You can I... see the screen? Yes, I can. Hopefully people can see it as well. I Let me actually... Take a but look. Uh, only the board or the full the full uh, notations. Let me just go ahead and check. Yeah, no, they 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 only see the board, not the notation. I just I just let them see the board so that they wouldn't. Uh, so that if there's if there's a question that they can't uh, that they can't see the answer too easily. Perfect. Oh, they can see the engine bar though. That's fine. I can I can actually I can change that. Uh, this is. This is my okay. There are no more engine bar. No more engine bars. That's for that's for you, Seb, since you're being tested. Right. <laughs> oh oh man. man. I'm I'm just gonna point that out there. My head is um uh, I have felt better. All right, okay. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know if Seb if you are able to see uh, just focus only on the board, um, but in this position here, after the move, uh, you can see that the move a4 has just been played. Do you recognize this game if you haven't seen the title yet? Uh, and if you have this, seen uh, the title... Uh, well, I have seen the title, but I do recognize it. This was the last round in Magnus and Anand, right? Like, uh, Anand was white and Magnus was black, and he took on a2, and then he took a knight, right? Something okay. Like okay. So, are you are you familiar with the tactical idea that I might test? Otherwise, if not, I will just test uh, some of the viewers if that's a possibility. Uh, well, I'll have a go anyway. All right. Awesome. Okay. So, I'm gonna take a I'm gonna take you through this uh, after the move a4. We have this position here where it's um, black is uh, is up a pawn, but it looks as though uh, white can grab the pawn on e5. I think in the game he was a little bit afraid to do so because of the possibility after knight takes e5 here of a3. And you're not in time to take this rook, of course, because uh, checkmate on b2. And well, it's possible that after knight c4, white could have just about hung on in there, but the position is really, really scary. And just one example of how uh, bad the situation can get, if white, for example, goes for b3 instead, here, queen would come to c3. And after queen c3, Knight would have to come to c4 in order to stop the threat of mate on b2. But after a2 check, king takes a2. Nothing else to do. Of course, if king goes to c1, uh, queen will be checkmate. So king takes a2. And after queen takes c2, this would be simply uh, completely game over. So I think that these were some of the ideas that white was, uh, was afraid of. And so Anand, he did not take. Instead, he went for some counterplay. Uh, with g6, and after h takes g6, h takes g6, black played rook f6, natural move, white gave this check, which turned out to be a big mistake, king went to a7, 
And here Anand went for queen to g4, trying to create some nasty mating threats. So for example, uh, if you were to play the move, rook takes g6 here, white would go queen to c8, and he has a crushing threat of checkmate here on a8. After all, the knight on c4 covers the b6 square, and there's really nothing to be done here for, uh, for black. You can give a check on g1, for example, but after king a2, the checks have run out, and white's nasty, nasty threat on queen a, uh, queen a8 is, uh, is going to be lights out. Question, question number one for you, what happens after, for example, king a6? How would you continue here, Sebastian? Queen a8. Queen a8. And then grab on b7 and king just hope five. that it's mate. Take on b7. Right, I got queen a7 in rook b8, right? Or am I, exactly. a, am I insane? No, you're not insane at all. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay that's, a, that's, a, that's a nice one to start out with, at least. Yeah, so very nicely spotted. Queen a7, there's nowhere uh, left for the black king to run. King has to go, for example, to... Uh, sorry, queen can block on b6, but otherwise king has to go to b5. And as you say, rook b8 is a, is a very nice checkmate. So uh, very nice, nicely solved there, Sebastian. There was a there was a question you, in the chat. There was a question in the chat of uh, which I just I just want to relay. It's a, it was a few moves before, but he was asking whether instead of a two check b five was possible, which I think maybe it was, but uh, I just didn't want to to ignore the question. Maybe b five was possible too, but a two looked pretty crushing. The position where I guess you took on c two on the next move. Um, yeah, a two. I mean b five trying to dislodge that knight might have also been decent. So you're right, Pascal. B five is um, is is a is a good move that keeps an uh, is a move that keeps an advantage. But the problem is after uh, knight takes a three, it's not uh, completely clear how black will continue. If this is the agreed, yeah, it's not. Yeah, if th if that's the position, I agree. Yeah, that doesn't seem totally clear because it's a pawn. You don't really want to lose um, for nothing, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, black. I mean, black should be much better here because this knight on a3 seems to just be completely out of the game, uh, and the white king remains quite, quite vulnerable. For example, one variation that is is kind of interesting after king to b7, black maybe aims to put the rook to f8. From there, swinging the rook over to a8 and creating some nasty mating threats. And one tempting idea might even be to just play king, uh, king c1 to try to bring this knight back into the game. But uh, there's lots of tricks in this position. A very uh, simple trick here, so I won't test Sebastian. Uh, but we can see it with the king on c1 and the queen on g3. I know what he would uh, what he would play ten times out of ten in a, in bullet, and that's a knight e2 check, picking up the queen. So lots of tricks remain, and I think the position would be a lot better for uh, for uh, for black. But nevertheless, the most convincing is. Uh, is a2 check. Now, the way the game went after g6 here from white, h takes g6, h takes g6, rook f6, rook h8 check, and king a7, uh, we had said that after this move, queen g4, white was preparing to bring the queen to c8, and from there create some very, very nasty threats uh, of, of checkmate or winning the queen. In the game, black captured the pawn on g6 here, However, it turned out it was sufficient for a bit of an advantage, but it turned out that there was a much stronger sequence here. Um, Sebastian, your turn. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember. I was, I, I, uh, I was commentating this game and I was like, what the hell? Why did he take on the G6? <laughs> but like, I, I remember there was something and the only sensible, uh, sensible option would be to check on E1, right? Check on e1, if, correct. If gonna, and then after, uh, yeah, after king a2, then you have to go for it and play knight e2 because if not, you're gonna lose after queen c8. So you basically have no choice. If you're gonna go for queen e1, you better go all in, all right? Okay, so Sebastian is saying queen e1 check, and after king a2, to play the move knight to e2. 
I'm just gonna say that in my mind that looks crazy. I don't see what he's doing here. So oh. maybe he's a genius. Oh man! Oh yet. man! Oh, oh man! <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> oh man, that's embarrassing. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, uh, never mind. I think uh, there was some. Yeah, yeah. I, I, that, that's probably what Magnus thought as well. Something like that. But uh, that's just uh, nonsense, of course. Because I have to bring the rook to f1 because they just plays queen c8 now, right? I have nothing. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't seem to be a exactly. threat. There's no threat yeah, yet. Yeah, I guess it takes no one more that, move. That's the yeah. issue. Yeah. So I have to, uh, I have to move it somewhere else where I have a threat. So I guess knight takes d3 makes sense because then he has to take and I play rook f1. Very nice. Okay, so in this position, <laughs> man, that was, not, uh, he asked you an easy one first and then a tough one. It, it wasn't that tough, actually. Uh, I just, uh, my head is not in the right place. <laughs> but okay, so, uh, Pascal, I'll, I'll give you that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to lose all my games later, so it's, you're going to get your turn to laugh. So the difference, of course, <laughs> being that after knight takes d3 here, I mean, it looks as though, uh, so the first line that Sebastian was saying, after c takes d3, the point is now you have this... Uh, Beautiful move, rook f1. The threat is queen a1, checkmate. And one one question is, why can the white king not just run away with, with king a3? And here, uh, the strongest win. It's not the only one, but the strongest win, Sebastian. That's to uh, threaten mate. And that's the only way to do that is to play c5, I guess. c5 with the threat of both queen a1, checkmate, and also queen b4, and queen b3 ideas so for example taking this pawn kills off the queen a1 ideas but after queen b4 it's game over and one of the nice features of this position i think makes it a very instructive choice is the queen on g4 and the rook on h8 they're stuck all over over all the way on the king side and there is uh simply nothing nothing to do to get these uh to get these pieces to defend the uh the white king uh, now, one final question on this position. After knight takes d3, what if white just goes queen c8 anyway? What's the difference with the knight on d3 versus the knight on e2? Is that a question for me or the chat? Uh, for for you, Sebastian, unless somebody in the chat... We give somebody in the chat a, a, a chance to, to answer it. We're going to oh, sure. Them... Well, I know the answer. It's made in like two or three. Yeah, three, I guess. So we'll see if someone in the chat sees it. What is the strongest sequence? And it's the only winning line. Huh, it's the only winning line? Really? Oh, right. yeah. Someone, someone has it. Someone has it. Someone said knight b4. Knight b4 check, correct, and after the king comes to a3. Now in this position, there are uh, there are two options, but you had to start with knight b4. For example, if you were to play the move knight c1 check, once again, it reverses after king to a3. It's black that runs out of checks and white's threats, the previous ones that we already saw, saw starting with queen a8, uh, become very, very problematic here. And so in this position here, black went, black would have gone knight b4, king a3, and then knight takes c2 check with checkmate on the next move. If you go to a2, well, let's say first if you take the pawn, then queen b4, while if you go to a2, then it's a nice checkmating pattern here with queen to a1. So after knight takes d3, uh, black would have won. Now, in the game, it ended somewhat similarly. Magnus played knight takes g6 initially, taking this pawn. It did give white some kind of chance to stop these ideas with queen g1 check, but white did not capitalize on it. He continued with aggressive play, rook to e8, and now queen e1 check came king a2 and rook f1. And after king a3, c5, we saw that same pattern, and black uh, White rather resigned uh, Magnus scoring a win. And Magnus has been really a dominant force uh, in this tournament uh, alongside Nepomniachi. Um, who, whose play have you guys been most impressed with? 
Uh, I'd say Kramnik, actually. Kramnik. Yeah. yeah, I mean Kramnik. Kramnik of the uh, of the veterans call them if we can call if it's okay to call them that has uh, has definitely been uh, very impressive, I think. Um, but uh, but then uh, Nepo to me has been very impressive. Like we've seen him play in, in some of these tour events where he was more inconsistent. He's got a pretty unorthodox style, but in this event, like he's just rolling people over, and it's. It is kind of amazing to see this the clock like he always has he always has all of his time almost so he's he's basically spending no time and his opponents are always down to seconds and he's got like 12 minutes it's 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 hard to uh it's it's hard to, pardon me i just dropped something it's hard to uh hard to play against that really yeah yeah nepo seems to that inconsistency arises out of his strategy but he seems to be uh, stubbornly defending that strategy i mean he doesn't show any signs of of uh of changing his playing style um at all and and when he gets on on a roll i think a lot of the top guys have said it i mean he's it's pretty much impossible to stop um very very uh very interesting but kramnik Kramnik's in third place right now. Is is that correct? Or uh, yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, I, th I think so too. You can look at the standings here. Yeah, Kramnik is in third, alone in third place, and uh, so yeah, Magnus, Magnus, and Nepo are now tied uh, in first place. Kramnik is in third, and uh, Peter Svidler is in is in fourth. But and Kramnik, but the, but I agree with Seb that Kramnik has been pretty impressive because actually the match that he. Um, I think the match that he lost was sort of not too. Uh, is that the one that he w lost one in Armageddon? I think. Um, yeah, he lost against Nepo, right? In Armageddon. In Armageddon, yeah, and he could have he could have put him away. I think in in one of the the other games. So he was he's pretty close to having like a really amazing uh, amazing tournament. And uh, but when I I I spoke with him a little bit, um, like the, I did the Q and A session with him. And uh, he seemed to be uh, so relaxed about his own play that it was like uh, it was sort of refreshing, actually. Like, and so he he clearly just enjoys. Uh, he's happy to be there, and he's not too worried about the results. And somehow his uh, relaxed state seems to have helped him do well. So, yeah, I think it's a kind of a phenomenon people speak about when you don't when you don't play for so long. And what what is his? Uh... He has some kind of name. I saw his banter blitz, and I, I think he's paying honor to the fact that that he's uh, he's he's semi retired right now, and he seems to. I don't know. There's something about seeing him play. He just seemed to be really, really enjoying himself. Yeah, his uh, he made his uh, nickname or his username on uh, Chess Twenty Four uh, Pensionnaire, which means like uh, someone who's collecting a pension. You know, obviously, I don't think Kramnik actually collects a pension, but he. Uh, but he, it's like a retired person, basically. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. a term which uh, which Sebastian certainly knows. I saw recently. I was saying to him that I saw Sebastian recently doing uh, playing some uh, one of his clips. He was doing the uh, Copa di Characera, the Spanter Blitz for Spanish, and he was doing it in Spanish while speaking to the chat in German. And uh, it's really it's quite impressive. At this point, I'm I'm losing track of how many languages you uh, you speak, uh, Sebastian. Where, Sebastian what, is like how... a 20 year old Renaissance man here. He's going to be you know we have these commercials in the in the U.S. for uh, for Dos Equis, you know the beer, and it's the most interesting man on earth. You know it's 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 <laughs> Sebastian basically. Oh, uh, thank you for for the compliments. I'll so take what's that the number? Uh, with me. I think it's actually not as many as you think, as you think, but it's uh, Norwegian, English, Spanish, and then some German and Bulgarian, I guess. My goodness, I don't have enough fingers. I don't have enough fingers to count. <laughs> uh, but it's uh, I, I have to work on it. Actually, my goal is to speak every language from just twenty four for the lols, because I would be like in a banter, <laughs> literally every single language. And I would go like full circle. <laughs> well, you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to tell Sebastian, our CEO, to stop adding languages. I mean, he's making your life harder. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's making it impossible, dude. Yeah. Uh, now he came with like Turkish, Chinese. Chinese. I mean, you're 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 <laughs> you know expanding even to different you know languages that have no uh, no common roots with any other languages you know. You know. Yeah, but that's that's uh, that's kind of an issue, honestly. Yeah, but it's okay. We learn. We live and we learn. Am I right? Sure. <laughs> Alex, did and, you want uh, to show us one more position? 
yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll show one, one uh, more here. Let me just select it. Okay. Uh, so this game here, it was a game between uh, Nepo, Nepo and Ding Liren. Let's actually take a look at it from the white side. And uh, well, the first few moves are ordinary Scotch game. But what um, what I wanted to show was a little bit down the down the line. We can actually show very quickly the game. Some crazy moves. Sorry, excuse me. Some crazy theory here. Um, rook lifts and h4 pawn moves. It seems to be the order of the day to just. Um, I remember. I mean, to just get increasingly creative with chess. I don't know what you guys. Uh, how you guys feel about this. But I remember a few years ago, people were saying, well, as computers just keep getting better and better, at some point, chess is going to die. It's just going to increase that huge percentage of draws. Just going, it's going to keep on increasing until the game no longer appeals. And I think that the opposite has happened and you're just seeing increasingly more funky stuff. So that's uh, no surprise. And these kind of lines have been scoring very, very well for, uh, for white. Yeah, it's kind of the opposite. The opposite of what I would have thought might happen, um, you know, is is that uh, you know people are playing people are playing less theoretical stuff in a way, and they're just trying to find fresh ideas in like the London system, and you know, and then also in in sort of lines that were considered innocuous back in the day, and it's it's kind of fascinating to watch. But this one, this particular variation of the Scotch, and I, I used to play the Scotch with White when I was younger. Uh, is really a weird line. Like if you're trying to explain it as a coach, it is so bizarre. Like both queens are out, white never develops any pieces. Now this particular line with h4 is like, and rook h3 is like basically what people play who don't know how to play chess. You know, they play their h pawn and move their rook up. Um, so I that, that one is actually quite funny. Yeah, I mean, for sure. And I think actually that uh, it's a good point you bring up as a coach. Um, how do you deal with this when, you know, not everybody is a professional chess player. And I, in my approach, at least, is to focus quite a bit on the classical games. I find that classical games, before computers started to dominate, are actually easier to wrap your head around and a little bit more instructive up until, let's say, you're at a 2000 or 2100 level. And then you can start to really toy around a lot with, uh, with the computers, or maybe a little bit uh, less. But that's sort of, uh, that's sort of my feeling, because I feel this is just above above one's pay grade if you're going to break down into the really nitty really nitty gritty uh heavy computer assisted stuff um but uh but it's fun to it's fun to watch certainly for, watch the top guys who do understand this uh watch them handle the position and so here rook comes to e3 already threatening to win uh, with capturing the pawn on e5 black played d6 queen f3 again very aggressive stuff from nipomniachi with queen f3 ding no slouch himself, he breaks uh, forward with e4. And we have this very crazy, uh, crazy game whites developing. Bishop b7, black tries to hold his center. And we're just driving forward now to, to the moment, which is really, uh, I think, fascinating. Uh, basically, at this point here, it's such a high, it's been such a high stakes game from the very get go. And white has put so much pressure on that black center, first on the E pawn and now on the D pawn. And um, black had very, very little room to go wrong. At this point already, the situation is really quite bad because white had the option to take on F6. And after queen takes F6, that center collapses with uh, knight takes D5. And although both kings are in the center with E1 and E8, we can actually see um, it's a lot, lot worse for black. His king here on E8 with all of these pieces, the rook on E3 playing, uh, none of the black rooks are playing, and the knight on d5 being such a powerful piece. The bishop on f1, ready to come to uh, b5. It's just too much, and the, the black position was overwhelmed. Now, the game continued with bishop takes d5, bishop b5, and we got this position. Very nice little tactic. Rook takes e4, uh, check. Bishop e7. Queen takes d5, rook d8, bishop takes c6, king f8, and queen c4. The position is, is winning, but to be fair, at this point, uh, Ding, with the black pieces, or rather, uh, um, Nepo, he started to 
uh, go wrong a little bit from now. And there were, of course, always some chances to maybe uh, equalize this position, because if you could manage to get the queens off the board, when you've got opposite colored bishops, you always have a chance. So here, um, the black king is too unsafe on f8. There are threats like rook f4, so white is winning, but you never know. It's not. It's worth playing on. Black uh, hangs on with bishop d6, stopping rook f4. Now comes rook d1, the final piece, into the action. g6, trying to bring the king to shelter. Rook comes to d3, again, very aggressive play. Rook f3 is uh, coming, so king g7 prevents the loss of the queen. Rook f3 and queen takes b2. And after rook f7 check, king h6, in this position, white is winning, but suddenly the path has really, really narrowed. White needs to find some obscure looking move like king f1, just tucking the king away before it continuing his attack. White actually tried to move uh, g4. Uh, sorry, excuse me. So. I didn't mean to suggest that White has um, White's cleanest win was King F1, perhaps, but G4 is also a win because in this position, after Queen B1 check, uh, King E2, in this position, Black tries to move Bishop to B4, and now after Rook to D4, here Black uh, played Rook to E8 check, King F3, and here after uh, queen h1 check, king g3, queen g1 check, king h3. In this position, white eventually, uh, event uh, eventually won because black has run out of checks. Queen h1 is no longer an option because a bishop takes queen. Queen f1 check is also no longer an option because a queen takes queen. However, the, the key position that I really wanted to show here is that after rook d4, black had one chance that would have required excellent play from uh, Nipomniachi in order to uh, convert and take the full point. So perhaps Nepomniachi had seen this variation. Um, I know that Ding Liren had very, very little time left on the clock. So it's 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 unclear what Nepomniachi's thoughts were, uh, at least uh, to me. I don't know if you guys have any inside knowledge on this. Uh, but here in this position, Black could have played queen b2 check. And now white would have been forced to find the move king f1. And Black could have taken this rook for free. And at this point, white would have had to find um, or, or an absolutely beautiful uh, variation uh, for the most precise win. Here, white has this move g5 check. And after king h5, in this position, black is actually uh, upper rook. So, but white would have had one beautiful path to victory. Now, Sebastian, I'm guessing that you you know about this one. I haven't seen this actually, but I do have some inside knowledge that I can uh, give to you. Okay, go for it. And then Nepo he said that it's proven that uh, the the worst uh, you play, the more points you get in the Legends of Chess tournament. That's what he said. <laughs> I I would be and shocked. I I would be shocked if he saw this because I I, I mean I I spent a lot of time looking at this position. I think it's absolutely amazing, but I would be shocked if he saw this. I I was assuming that instead of king f1 he was planning to play the end game with king e3 and thought that maybe he could win that um because it does kind of force an end game um i mean if he found it hats off to him but i think that that position here he still can try it's still reasonable to think that maybe he could win this um so that's what i thought but i could be of, of course i could be wrong and i don't have any inside knowledge um <laughs> so i don't know yeah uh... but this this would make perfect sense to speculate. So just to show that end game after say queen takes d4, queen takes d4, rook takes d4, king takes d4. In this position here, level material, but uh, black has uh, his work cut out for him because his king is really stuck on h6. Um, there could be some problems. The white king, of course, really well placed on d4. The white rook on f7 much more active and even the bishop on, on c6 it's a, it's a i think a little bit of a stronger piece than the than the black counterpart so overall the position offers some very very good winning chances um but the most clinical finish here instead of king e3 is uh, the move king f1 with the idea that after rook takes d4 g5 check king h5 and here sebastian what right, or right. let's give it to the chat first, well, actually. Well, you're, I do you're... actually have an idea due to the fact that you, I know there's something, and then you have to you have to just think logical about it, right? 
So you have to you have to try to threaten me, and you have to ask yourself, hmm, how do I threaten mate in this position, right? <laughs> and then you go, and then you and then you go like, uh, well, uh, there is only one way to do that, I think, and that's rook f4, right? Because you threaten bishop f3, mate, mate, mate ends the game. You are <laughs> correct here. Rook to f4 is the uh, only checkmating uh, idea. And of course, you know that you're down a rook. So if you don't find something very concrete, it's uh, it's going to be a problem. But it looks as though you're going to lose your queen. But as you pointed out, bishop here to f3 uh, is a beautiful, beautiful checkmate. Um, and what's fascinating about this position here after rook f4 is that there's simply um, there's simply nothing that that black can do. I mean, if he takes on f4, then queen takes f4, and you will renew the threat. And one thing that's nice here is in some situations with that undefended bishop on c6 and the king on f1, you might be worried about a double attack. But here, queen c1 check is not an option because the queen on f4 is doing a wonderful, wonderful job of covering that square. So uh, you would lose the queen. You can give a check on a1 or b1, but it's not going to prolong the game for, for too much. Uh, well, therefore, I, I thought this game was overall really, really interesting from like an opening stage uh, perspective. And then in the end here, it would have been fascinating. There was very little time for black, but it would have been fascinating to see uh, is there was there any chance at all that Nipomniachi would find the, the beautiful move King F1 with the idea one final time. Rook takes D4, G5 check, King H5, and the only winning move here, Rook F4. I think very, it's very really nice hard to find effect. though, because you have to re you have to like, you don't know that there's mate, right? When you're thinking, you don't know that it works. You have to be 100% sure that there's no tricks or whatever. And it's quite unnatural to just, oh, hey, I can play a king F1, <laughs> right? Because you just make queen, uh, queen E3 because you're low on time anyway, right? And you make king E3, just you use your yeah. wrist and you make it. Although, you know, it, re it reminds me like there are a lot of these top guys have been doing uh, the final puzzle in uh, the chessable. There's a crafty Raf, and I think narrated by John Bartholomew, they have this um, checkmating patterns manual that came out not so long ago. And we've seen like the final test being done by a lot of the top guys and their knowledge of, I don't know if you guys have seen any of those videos, but their knowledge of the checkmating patterns is and the speed with which they work through them is, uh, is through the roof. I know, uh, I think Magnus Carlsen actually scored the fastest, uh, fastest speed, but not the highest percentage. Uh, um, but uh, I, think, I think with someone like Nepo, there's always a chance, even though uh, I agree that with, with what Pascal is saying, that almost certainly King E3 uh, would have been seen. Um, out of interest, have you guys seen any of those checkmating, uh, uh, checkmating patterns videos? I've seen, I saw, I think I was watching the, the very first one that came out. I forgot who it was. Um, the one that, that first came out, but I, yeah, I forget who it was, but uh, yeah, it was, I mean, all those guys are, are incredibly, incredibly impressive. So it's, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the, this young generation, I would call them, you know, they're so fast. It's, it's unbelievable. For sure. Um, so that's uh, that's it as far as uh, the two games that I wanted to show. Um, I'll just do, I suppose, uh, um, I'll say for anybody who wants to watch some of the the coaches, coaches, and who maybe have tuned into uh, tuned into this uh, show recently, that starting from next week, from Monday to Friday, we're going to see um, every day uh, one of the coaches, coaches uh, working with uh, giving lessons. Sometimes working on Thursdays and Fridays, they'll be working with students. And they'll be three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, it's going to be in English. Tuesdays and Thursdays, it's going to be in Spanish. And if you're uh, either a junior player, an adult player, and you're, um, you're uh, anywhere, uh, especially in the 1500 or below bracket, that uh, those, those lessons are hopefully going to be uh, very educational uh, for you. And this first week, it's going to be based on uh, games of uh, some of the legends of chess that are participating in the in the ongoing Chess 24 Legends of Chess tournament. So hopefully some people will be interested in that. Cool. Sure. 
Well, thanks, uh, thanks a lot, Alex, and thanks for uh, thanks for tuning into this happy hour. Made it uh, made it fun. Is the idea of this show to have different people with different segments and give the uh, give the audience a little bit of everything. So thanks, uh, thanks a lot for that. That was great. I love this position we work at four. I can't get over it. Yeah, it's uh, same here. It's absolutely incredible, Pascal. And I mean, okay, you were <laughs> you were the person who who drew my attention to this particular. Uh, this particular game just because of its sheer sheer beauty. So thank you for that. And okay. uh, thank you, Sebastian and, and Pascal for having me on. Uh, thank you, Alex. I hope to see your uh, beautiful face soon. It's, <laughs> it's been too long. <laughs> let's, let's hope we uh, we can meet in person at some point over the coming months. It'll yeah, be really, I'm sure. Really nice to catch up. All right. Well, thanks a lot. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Alex. Thank you, guys. Really All right. When uh, when Alex leaves the meeting, it may uh, it may mess up my uh, my image here, but I'll fix that. I don't know. I haven't figured out how to do that. I'm not a uh, I'm not an expert producer. Have you figured that out, Seb? Like when someone leaves? Uh, no, dude. Uh, oh, I struggle with that as well. So I'm right. I'm there on stream. Like, oh, I just just give me a second. I just <laughs> I do that like every day. So I I feel you. Tech Seb is uh, on board with the uh, Tech Pascal on this one. Yeah. Now now I'm I'm doing like a in between trying to here we go i may figure it out eventually i apologize right, well, to the i mean people can hear us they just can't see us right this second right so while you work on that i'll close the window we are almost back here we go looks something normal um, I, I will eventually learn all of the, uh, all of the little, uh, zoom, uh, tricks. Um, and I think we have a, a special guest joining us in just a few minutes here. So, um, what just happened to my, I feel your pain, man. I feel your pain. <laughs> yeah. You can laugh. You can laugh. You know, laughing is, is sort of the uh it's the only cure that i know for this yeah, disease for this yeah disease same here. <laughs> no but it, it's in general in life when uh, when you're in a tough uh through tough times a laugh always helps agreed couldn't could not agree more um and now yeah. you're having you're having some crazy long days right like tomorrow tomorrow uh magnus is going to be um um starting early right we should tell people yeah. just so that they know actually yeah it's gonna start at 12 uh 12 uh, a.m central europe 12 p.m i guess it is and is that um are we allowed to say why he's starting early or what's the what's the uh do we know uh, why we are. I yeah mean, i've done that all right so then you can say it just tell the story well, I think it's a, a matter of a lot of factors, but one of the factors is that he's doing incredibly well in the Fantasy Premier League, which means that and uh, tomorrow is the last round of uh, Premier League. So he's been allowed to play earlier, while also uh, uh, the TV and stuff will send uh, football on TV. And there's a lot of sponsor and sponsors involved because he's uh, he might win, which is incredible. Yeah, so, it is. Uh, it is pretty amazing to be because it's out of like a humongous number of people. Right? I forget how many, but it's like a like gazillion, seven million. Or yeah, millions so, of people. I yeah, think. that's that's pretty. Uh, it's pretty wild. Yeah, and I like Premier League as well. So for sure, I'm gonna be having the game tab open, looking in between rounds. And what does does it, do we know? Like, what does Magnus need to happen? Like, what's good for him in this game? Uh, he needs to be quite lucky. I think he needs to gain a decent chunk of points. Okay. And uh and I guess his opponent is Dingley Ren and Dingley Ren being in China might not be too upset with playing a little bit earlier, right? Cuz normally the games start the time difference at least with me is like 12 or 13 maybe even 13 hours with uh the Eastern United States, maybe like 7 hours from you or something like that. I don't know. But basically the yeah. game start the game start pretty late, so he's going to get um to play at a more normal time tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, he is. So I think he's thrilled about that. Yeah. Um, all right. I think our guest will be joining us in a minute. Do you want to play a, do you want to play me like a one, one, one minute game? Just, I mean, yeah, yeah of course. I'll, and then I'll, I'll probably like, you, you know, 
Um, someone will probably show up and then I'll, I'll lose on time, but I'll have an excuse. So it's perfect. Right, um, bro, that, that's perfect indeed. So I'm just gonna, all right, yeah. I'm ready. You're ready. Okay. You are. Okay. I'm <laughs> yeah. I'm, you can see everybody I'm challenging the one and only Sebastian. Uh, the father. <laughs> all right. Wow. I didn't realize my bullet rating was that high. Oh yeah. That's very high. I better, I better. Oh, oh crap! Uh, I didn't see it. <laughs> was, yeah, yeah that was a terrible, uh, terrible slip. <laughs> oh man, that was. Uh, it's not looking good. I'm not used to playing at all. Like, yeah, my mouse is kind of in a weird spot. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's so fast. Me? You're, yeah, you're yeah, fast. You're, I'm, you're I'm like, fast. I'm actually like a, uh, I'm a dinosaur here. I'm. Absolutely. Dinosaur in its purest form. Oh my goodness! I just made a huge blunder. I most... don't know. It's not that good to take it. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, <laughs> that was your idea, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm just. Okay. What is this? This is gonna be bad for you. Yeah, that's a bit. That was a bit risky, I guess. Balls of steel. Okay, this is not looking oh, what good. Am I? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, that was a bit weird. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, that, that was also a bit weird. Oh my and god. And that was also a bit weird. All right, all right. <laughs> I played one move too fast. And I yeah, think... You can have your revenge if you want. I think our guest our guest is here. So, well, yeah, I'll play one more, but she can, she can start talking as well. All when right. she's ready. Okay. She Over. might be on mute. I'm gonna play French for you. French, yeah, yeah. In my honor. Yeah, in your honor. Okay. <laughs> your in your honor, your honor. I don't know what I'm. <laughs> I'm gonna allow my pawns to be. Uh... Oh, he did this. Okay. Yeah, that was that was a bit weird, but. But yeah, it's Bloodborne against Pac-Man, as it says in the chat. His father Gascon is from Bloodborne, but I guess you didn't know that, right? No, I didn't know that at all. Or did I tell you? No, I don't think so. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's where it's from. It's a PlayStation 4 game. Yeah, oh, yeah, you, actually you did. I just, I don't know this game, so it doesn't really mean too much to me, actually. Oh, that's yeah. The thing. It means nothing to you. Nothing, yeah, zero. Zilch. Zilch, right? Zilch exactly. That, oh, Sebastian <laughs> speaks German. That's going to be, that's that's just incredible. But a silch is a way of saying like nothing, right? Yeah, I yeah. Think well, that's that, another way. Actually, I, I, I know that word, and I don't speak any German, so. Um. Yeah, but you just—it's uh, it, funny though, because you learn a lot of words sometimes, and words pick up on other languages. So you get like expressions in Norway. You do that as well. You have German expressions in Norway. I see. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna definitely lose on time here and, and on position. position too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, that was Ooh. a fancy try. He attempts. Maybe not in position after all. No, maybe. Well, you know. Yeah. Oh, man. Maybe I'm losing in position. I guess it doesn't. Uh, it's it's all good. Oh. That be oh. Whoa. Crap. But he's way too slow, though. Yeah. Way too slow. Oh, yeah. It's, it's Oh, my God. I'm so slow. <laughs> very, very slow. Yeah. All right. So, uh, Elizabeth is with us. Can she hear us? Can she speak? Yes, I can hear you and I can speak and I'm following your excellent bullet game. Oh, thank you. Thanks. So, uh, welcome. <laughs> welcome. Yeah, so we have Elizabeth Pats. I have to add your name to our stream here. I'm the producer today, so it's not as smooth as some other times. How are you today? I'm fine. It's just late here, but I guess for you it's early afternoon or late afternoon or something. Uh, for me, yeah, for me, it's it's about to be six o'clock in the evening. Uh, you might be able to hear my son crying right now. And, yes, um, <laughs> some of these voices in the background. <laughs> and for Sebastian, it's breakfast time because Sebastian doesn't go to sleep until later. So, yeah, I, I, I'm sleeping in the office tonight. Actually, <laughs> it's a uh, <laughs> it's a good way it's a good way to do it. Uh, nobody can say that Sebastian is not working hard. That's for sure. Thanks for the kind words, my my friend. <laughs> so it's a guys... pleasure to have you on as well. 
So following the conversation, Sebastian is Norwegian. Yes. Okay. Yeah, Sebastian is Norwegian. He is um, he does the Norwegian commentary during the uh, during the tournaments. Um, so he's doing like so we're we're having this Legends of Chess tournament. Have you followed this at all? Or? Uh, I just know some of the participants, and I know that Carlson is tied with Nepo, and then there's Kramnik, and then there are the others. So you basically know you know everything. <laughs> well, not everything. I just I mean like. The, 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 I mean, the truths are the very honest truths. I just know that because I was listening to your stream. <laughs> ah, well, that, that's great. That's, you know, we, we aim to, uh, we, uh, we aim to, to entertain and to, to tell people something that they don't know, hopefully sometimes. So, you know, it's part of the idea. Um, so what are we going to do now? Um, do, do you, I think maybe we should have Elizabeth play a few games first uh, against the audience. I need to put on the stream your actual username. What's your username, by the way? Uh, that's a good question. Let me click on it because I already logged in on Chess24. I think it's Elizabeth Pates. It's just my name. Maybe it's with a dot. Elizabeth dot Pates, yes. And Elizabeth is with an S, right? It's with an S and a DH at the end, yes. Okay. So then I'm going to put that on the stream so people can see it. It's in a funny vertical angle. But so, um, so, so uh, members, premium members, please challenge Elizabeth and I will actually follow you. And you can play a few games. I may actually um, excuse myself for a few minutes and then I'll come right back. You should also play Sebastian at some point, but I warn you, he's very, very fast. We'll also I do some, we should do some hand and brain too. Oh man, not that again. <laughs> I'm terrible at that. <laughs> Are you terrible at being the hand or the brain? Uh, I, I think I'm terrible at being uh, the brain actually. <laughs> I just, but, but I think we did an okay job last time, but. So I have to accept challenges from everybody or just from premium members? Uh, from premium members. Okay, I hope I have so many challenges because for now. Yeah, it's I because because the, uh, somehow I need to add you to the, um, to be able to uh, to click, but uh, Ollie just posted, Ollie just posted the, um, um, the link to your profile, so people should be able to challenge from there. Okay, so far I got one challenge. I know I got a few challenges. Oh, I got Kramnik student. That sounds scary. I've played Kramnik student before. He's not bad. But he's, I mean, I'm not even sure how to recognize premium members from non premium. Premium, premium are the one with the little crown next to their name. Like Kramnik student is one for sure. Although they have this queen next to their exactly name. their little orange orangey queen. Okay, then I will just take uh, f for the start to warm up. Not cram next student because I don't want to embarrass myself immediately. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take someone weaker first, at least by rating. So I can just accept it, right? Yeah. And shall I be talking during the game? Or? Of course. And Sebastian should be bugging you and me also. Yeah, it's All going right. to be two people bugging you, not only one, but two. Two, yeah. Oh, yeah, I have to follow the game, the games. Yeah, I can snack a norsk in lit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's pretty good, actually. That's pretty good. <laughs> Oh, my Norwegian. I mean, I used to speak some Norwegian, but it's been a long time ago. I oh, yeah, I think I know why. <laughs> How can you know why? I mean, you are just a totally different generation. It's been. Uh, he was my former coach. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that so, explains it. Sebastian, Sebastian knows <laughs> yeah. a lot. You have to be careful with him. Yeah, he's, I, he's... I know. I know everything. I know everything. But I can Deutsch speak now, but not so good. <laughs> Sebastian did you did some German um, German banter recently, right? Yeah, I did German banter, but that was that was awful. But but I survived. Okay. Mostly by singing, 
אתם לא סטורסטינאים. וזה נויה תגבה. A shout out to Holly. Holly in the chat helps us a lot. It would be hard to have Chess 24 without Holly. Yeah, big shout out to him. He's kind of, um, he's kind of my reserve dad. And I guess <laughs> Holly is uh, German? Yeah. Yeah, right. yes. Probably speaks better German than Sebastian. Well, I mean, I don't know whether this is supposed to be like something like successful or not. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's just uh, it's banter, so it's... But it seems you're doing pretty well in your game. Well, actually at some point I played very bad, but I wasn't punished. I like this opening with e6, b6. Also, Simon plays it a lot. The Simon? Boy. Who's Simon? Simon, Will Simon Williams. Oh, Simon only Williams. Only one ginger boy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he does a lot of chessable content. Has he been on Chess24, uh, Seb? Uh, I don't think so, but I know the guy well. It's actually, he it was one of the first grandmasters I ever met. So I was like, I think I was nine or something. And uh, he's a funny guy. Yeah, no, he's, he's great. I, uh, I don't really know him that well. I think our paths didn't cross that much back in the day when I was playing more. So I, I'm not, uh, I know, I know I, I play some kids sometimes, um, like some New York kids and a lot of them play this, uh, black lion and that's all because of his video on a black lion. Black lion. I'm almost plundering everything already. <laughs> If knight h2, I would have lost a piece. Huh, But that's... now I'm not losing a piece immediately. Maybe I'm losing the exchange, but I can live with that. Maybe you could have played like rook takes f1 and knight f6 or something. But yeah, no, it's a... It's, uh... B4, key B4 is nothing to worry about because now at least I can attack some pieces. Seems like you're, uh, I like what you've done so far. So I want you to play Pascal first, actually. <laughs> That'd be great. I mean, like just to, to, to test out how, how badly I'm doing against him so you know what you're expecting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm glad you get it. It's mm. like the... Um... Yeah, it's like when you when you uh, when you have to you know first first they want to see how good you are, and then you play the real the real good you know good person. So that's Sebastian's. Uh... Oh Jesus! Now I plundered already. <laughs> oh man. Ah, ah, doesn't matter. Oh, I you're playing five. dangerous ride. Yeah. Which dangerous country? Ride. Which country? Which country is that flag? By the way, can it's you Croatia. tell? That's cool. It looks oh, yeah. something like Serbia, Croatia. Yeah, I wasn't sure it. which, like, I wasn't sure which from the, the image. Mm -hmm. At least positionally, he made a kind of plunder. Nah, you're, doing, you're doing great. Indeed. <laughs> Your bishop is coming back now. Yes, that's the idea. Ah, it's looking... Uh, to outplay him. You win on time anyway, which is the most important. I, I right, Pascal? Yeah, to... for sure. <laughs> you had queen of four, didn't you? I don't know. Probably had a lot of things which are probably winning. Do we play with increment, actually? I don't know. It depends on what you accepted. I don't remember. But now I blundered again, but he did it as well. <laughs> now let's just take all these pieces. Jesus Christ. Well, that was a, that was a good game. That was convincing. <laughs> <laughs> Very convincing. 
boy. Okay, I'm I'm still scared to take Ramnik's student because he'll probably punish me. Don't be scared. Well, okay, I will take Ramnik's student. Hopefully, no, I'm not even white. You're black again. Yeah. Okay, let's stay with E6. Oh, the dreaded French. Yeah, the French. Can you speak French? Un petit peu. Un petit peu. But Pascal <laughs> would laugh about my French. My Russian is good, but my French is well. It's not that great. Your Russian is probably better than my Russian. I hope so. <laughs> but I don't know how good is your Russian, to be honest. It used to be quite good, but now not. I don't practice much. And... Well, certainly better than mine. Yeah, even though but you're... Your name actually is Serb. It has a Serbian background, no? My dad's Bulgarian, that's why. Ah. <laughs> yeah. And then your the other half is Norwegian, if it's okay to ask. She's a yeah, yeah, why wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, my dad was a waiter and my mom was a customer. <laughs> That's how they met on and vacation. Then, it's a bit, bit, of, bit of a coincidence. I guess you what? didn't want to put King on D8, right? That was no, the thing is, like, I, I mean, at some point, like, I wanted to play this move and it wasn't my move and I put it as a pre move. And then I wanted to kill the pre move because I was afraid he would attack something. And then I put the pre move on D8, which wasn't much better. It doesn't matter. We will just squeeze out somehow. I'm not sure how, but we will close the position now. <laughs> That's a. Yeah, they call it castling by hand somehow. Now you have to castle by hand. Yeah. It's okay. Thing. It's okay. No worries. I will pretend this was a Fisher random game. But, yeah. I think I've seen you like many times. And I think the last time I saw you was in the European Club Cup or something. Well, yeah, I played actually. Yeah, yeah. I played so not good. I played. Now there are starting to be some events again in Europe. Like, do you know when you'll be able to play somewhere? Or? I will play the German Women's Championship, and usually I wouldn't play this tournament. But since like there's no other tournament, I decided to play it. <laughs> no, that that makes sense. Where is it? Is it close by? Or? It's an uh, it's an estate uh, which is actually kind of free from Corona, so this is a good part. The bad part is that, uh, well, we don't know what will happen because it seems like that uh, now we get a second wave. That's what they claim. Mm -hmm. But I don't know how it is in your country. Probably you don't even have a second wave because the situation is not that good in America, right? Well, I mean, we have a first wave that hasn't gone away. So, yeah, I mean, it's definitely, definitely not that good. <laughs> um, but uh, but we never really shut everything down either. So it's uh, a lot of stuff is still open. So it's just kind of odd. Um, but at this point, I guess uh, we'll just see how much worse it's going to get. But uh, yeah. Jesus, my position is so bad. Yeah, he could have tried knight g5 like a few moves ago. It would have been kind of yes. annoying, I think. Well, I think the position is nonetheless quite annoying. So <laughs> it's not like change. I've, I've seen worse. Okay, but this pre-move was not uh, planned. Let's put it this way. Yeah, you've seen worse. I can't imagine that you have seen worse than that. Yeah, this. Oh, you have uh, you have your tricks. Oh yeah. I have my tricks. It's actually no tricks. <laughs> it's just that loss. <laughs> well, it's, it's. I mean, like, it's not like I'm losing the the. Like immediately, I mean. From material point of view, I can still fight at least. Can you? Who who like, is close to a church or something? Uh, it's the me. It's the city hall. I'm uh, like in the absolute center of Norway. Okay, that's where the office, that's where the Chess 24 Norwegian castle is. Yeah, that's where the castle is. And you're very welcome to come here. I, 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 don't, I, I don't think they, uh, that I'm welcome. I think as an American, they're going to kick me out before I make it. <laughs> oh, no, don't worry. I got my permission. 
Yeah, yeah, with the uh, I got the special Sebastian pass. Uh, yeah, you don't don't worry about that. <laughs> I have to think how to survive. I'm not sure how, but somehow. It's not. I actually thought it was worse, but. Well, at that point, it was much worse. I mean, like, I'm almost having the best position in the entire game, but still, it's very <laughs> bad. Uh, it's the French. It always, uh, it always gets you into trouble. Oh, yeah, no, you... it's a free move on the eight, which wasn't planned. Okay, it's a check. So maybe now it's time to sacrifice. Huh. Because oh. his king is weak. Yeah, you're, you might be... Uh be out of the woods actually yeah because now he has to worry a bit about his he doesn't care about his king actually that's funny let's see how much he doesn't care there's a counter attack here he wants to get a perpetual check or can i avoid that huh well on the bright side you won't lose any rating if you draw it's not about the rating, it's about the pride. Yeah, very true. Okay, now he still has checks. If I go to e6, he doesn't have a check. So let's go to e6 and see what he's doing. It looks pretty bad for him, doesn't it? He still has I a move, know. I think. Like if he plays, I don't know if I'm supposed to say it, but you know. <laughs> I don't even know what movie you're talking about, but I just well, I don't think it. I don't think it. I don't think it complete. I don't think it wins or anything, but uh, but he's not lost. No, he's not lost. This is for sure, but it's not easy for him either, because the problem is like that. All kind of pawn endings are not winning for me. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, I mean, he has to give something back, but. But actually, I don't know if you're threatening to win, right? Like, well, you're threatening right now the rook. But if he moves the rook like somewhere, I don't know. You don't have a checkmate. No, I don't have a checkmate because the queen is annoying. Yeah. But I will not allow the queen to go to f2. Makes his life too easy. That seems like a good way to proceed. Okay, now I need something clever. Okay, let's take this pawn. That's always good to take pawns. Just for the ending. Oh, he's disappearing. Why is disappearing? It looks winning, actually. Does what a turnaround. Why does it look winning, actually? I'm not even sure what pawns to take. There are too many. Let's take this one. Okay, he allows me to take them with a check. That's always good. Ah. Okay, now, I mean, let's just move with the pawn. He has a check. Yes, he has a check, which is annoying or not. That's ah, not annoying. Mm, should be careful also a bit. <sighs> I can't calculate so much. It looks good. Good job. Good job on that turnaround. Okay, maybe now the pawn ending actually <laughs> is winning for me. Okay. <laughs> Let's just exchange the queens. So Kramnik student after all. <laughs> <laughs> Not yeah. very impressive. Well, it was impressive. It was impressive until uh, until something went wrong. But it was impressive for a while. Yep. Yes, it was impressive for the fact that I was totally lost. What about Pascal? Don't you want to have a go? I mean, I I can challenge. I can get I can get in the queue. I can get in the queue. I suppose. Yeah, you should. I'm dying to see you play, actually. 
dying to see me play it's a bit it's a bit it's a bit too strong of an emotion <laughs> yeah yeah but uh, that's why i'm here yeah yeah to show emotion that's true <laughs> i think sep is mocking you <laughs> are you a gm paceman right that that would be are me you, yeah. your rating i mean why i'm black again that's you know i don't know i didn't i swear i didn't do anything to, uh, <laughs> yeah. to, to make you be to make you have the black pieces oh yeah she's playing this b6 okay yes a3 what a chicken approach a3. <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean I'm, I'm a retired player you know it's, i'm enjoying it already i have to calculate now jesus i don't like calculations you don't I like calculations ah, i'm too old for that that's how i feel about myself and you know i have a few years on you okay let's pretend good 80s good place to to be born good time yeah you you like you like the the 80s yeah well, the music the movies the games Pascal, you were born in 84? Uh, nope. No, I was born in 83, actually. 83, yeah. Mm -hmm. I knew it was something close to me. Yeah, no, you were you were right. It's close, close enough. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm late 90s. Young boy. Yeah, yeah he is. He is <laughs> he's basically a child. <laughs> oh, them. How does it feel to lose against a child? It's painful. <laughs> it's, you don't even you don't even know how painful it is. I bet it must be very painful. It's very painful. Uh -huh. it certainly is. I know the feeling. We got an interesting game between uh, game between you two. Yeah, two guys. It's true. Very interesting. Okay, she took my bishop. So I don't have a bishop pair anymore. Oh my goodness! Ooh, I don't care about the bishops. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a deep deep tactic. I totally yeah, missed that. Deep. Yeah, he missed it. That's the, that's the Pascal I know. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> okay, I have to play down the exchange. I think it's not yeah, the worst exchange to be down anyway, though. There are, like, as, I, uh... as Sebastian famously said, I've seen worse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The thing is, like, I'm very talented and screwing up good positions, so don't worry about that. I think I have to. But Pascal belongs to that group as well. Oh, yeah. So then I'm very interested to see who's going to win. <laughs> it's going to be a battle <laughs> to see who, who wants to lose, really. Hmm. 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 Okay, I'm going to keep this file closed. Oh, Jesus. You're okay over there, Seb? <laughs> yeah, yeah, just, uh, just a bit tired, I guess. Ah, I am um, plundering again already. That was quick. <laughs> ah, I can still save it. I can still save it? Seb uh, is, mis yeah, Seb well, is misleading with his, uh, with his, uh... <laughs> I mean, I'm losing a pawn already. Yeah, that's true. But the question is, like, my structure is still a little bit better. So let's not care about the pawn. And just, I mean, I'm with the exchange, obviously. Oh, Jesus, my time is also running. Okay, so now I can, I can take your rook. Yes, this is a point, but I didn't want you to take the c7. This was even worse for my heart. <clears throat> even worse. For my well being. <laughs> okay, we have a rook end game. Looks like a draw to me. It looks. He tries to disappear. <laughs> to disappear? Well, kind of. 
What Let's go it? for the pawn ending. The pawn ending. It's like now I need like an hour to calculate. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I can tell the pawn ending might be very risky for you, but maybe it's still fine actually. All right, I have to try it just for fun because you told me it's very risky, so now I have to try it. But maybe it's very really risky for me actually. <laughs> I don't know. It looks risky for you to me, but maybe I'm wrong actually. Pawn yeah, endings no, are so difficult. Right. It was not good for me to do this. I I missed this kind of king f2 waiting moves. He's a genius. Wow, kind of. Now he's getting annoying. This is my he's actually a genius. I have, I have my Russian technique. Yeah, your Russian technique is scary. <laughs> No, I'm lost, actually. Yes, that's what I meant, was having winning positions, which I can't win, obviously. This is this is how I feel sometimes. I'm very sorry that's... about this this uh, this victory. It was not it was not deserved. Um, but so so then then you get to play Sebastian. You mean to be kicked by him as well? No, no, you have to kick him <laughs> this way. This way. This is how I can beat him. Like if I beat you and then you beat him, then I'll feel like I beat him. <laughs> oh man, that's that's pressure. That's my plan. That's my plan. That's a deep logic. Uh, Let's yeah. not stand on ceremony here. <laughs> <laughs> so it's Father Gas, Gas, whatever. Father Gasco, and that's me. Again, I mean, this is amazing. Actually, I'm getting all my games black. <laughs> Yeah, it's incredible. Indeed. Oh wait, I have to follow you somehow. You guys started playing already, right? Yeah. I apologize, and here we go. Now you can see the game. Don't worry. Don't worry, my friend. Seb, you played F4 on move one, yeah? Yeah. I, I felt like uh, enjoying myself a little bit. But she's uh, she's prepared. No, I'm not prepared. I'm just playing the same setup I would do against a Dutch with white color. It's very <laughs> simple, simple mind story. Jesus, so aggressive. <laughs> yeah, one must be in order to take the victory. But it's not looking that good, actually, which is a bit scary. Yeah, but you already see that winning positions in my case don't matter. Sure. <laughs> but maybe it does this time because so you know what's at stake here there's a lot of stuff at stake you're playing awfully fast yeah because last I mean we're playing 3 plus 0 this time now yeah no, it's not like I can do much true you're playing fast, faster than me better as well Oh man. I was I was telling Sebastian today about a book called Thinking Fast and Slow, which basically sounds like it's written about bullet chess, but um but it has nothing to do with chess. Really? Who wrote the book? Uh it's a psychologist. Uh his name is I think Daniel Kahneman. The last name is Kahneman. He's an American, well, Sounds kind of German, actually, but I don't know if it is. But he's a he's an American uh, professor, and it's about like how right. you how your brain works, and it's an interesting book. Interesting stuff. But it has nothing to do with chess, I guess, right? No, no, nothing to do with chess. I'm the the slow one here. Well, one of us has to be slow. Yeah, that's me. Everything is relative. <laughs> well, I'm not going to on that. <laughs> Good one, Pascal. Yep, yep. I have to. I have, I have to enjoy it when I'm not playing. You know. Yeah. You must certainly have to. You certainly have to. Hmm. Actually, did you know that uh, Pascal? Uh, there's a kind of a brand in Norway called Pascal. It's because there's a guy called Pascal who's famous for selling delicious sweets and cakes. And this He's is a like brand a where? Chef. You said in Norway? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. 
it's pretty cool watch your night watch your night oh too late i don't worry what were, what were you gonna do on g5 i don't know okay i didn't see that on g5 yeah i didn't see that at the ball me neither but i mean like why are you speaking like what we are going to do on g5 <laughs> <laughs> may i ask this question <laughs> You should be neutral. <laughs> no, I, I, what were, he wants I think me I said to lose. you, that, I said, what are you why. going to do? I don't think I said we, if I said we. Yeah, yeah, was... yes, yeah, you said, you said me. Yeah, I said like, you, what, what are, are you, you going to do? Yeah. Yeah, because you want me to lose, which is understandable, of course. Well, yeah, mm. I mean, it's, that's, but that that's, will not you happen. Know. Oh, Jesus, I'm too slow for this stuff. Uh, you're must, must much faster than me. You're way up on the clock. Yeah, but now actually, like, I made a mistake. No. What do you mean, like, oh, yeah. no? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, man. Okay, and this is actually at least a little bit better in terms of not being mated immediately. But yeah, am I mated? No, I'm not. Not yet. Not yet. Good. Good to know that. <clears throat> Ooh, here comes the, the forces. D4, that's bold. Don't you well, think, Pascal? Have to open your position in terms of not getting mated quickly. I might be the one getting mated though, if I'm not careful. I did blunder a pawn, terrible. It's just a pawn. A pony pawn. Oh my, <laughs> I guess they don't turn out great. I've seen worse though. I mean, yep, so this is uh, this went down the drain. All right, this is my first win of the day against Sebastian. <laughs> <laughs> Why it's a win? Don't give me pressure, actually. Oh man, the mouse. I don't have the time for this stuff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is a, I'm still, I'm still, I'm still counting it as a win for myself. <laughs> yeah, but it's not actually. <laughs> Should play with increment because I'm too slow for the mouse. <laughs> so, ac I just want to look at this. Ali is saying that that the position that we had just before was actually a draw until the end. I want to see that because I thought, huh, maybe it actually maybe it's true. Well, I'm sure it's true because Ali says it, <laughs> but <laughs> but that uh, apparently the spawn end game game was a draw. So I'm going to try to show it. Very well. So here, apparently, when I played h5, apparently the king can just go to g7 and hold. Yeah, actually, that makes some sense. Because I can't go to the other side. Maybe I wasn't supposed to play h5. Um, maybe I was thinking I about King G7, but I didn't see that this was like drawing actually. Yeah, yeah, somehow you can just hold. That's interesting. Yeah, Seb is just Seb is just very fast. Um, all right, maybe you play. Uh, maybe Elizabeth can play more because she's not. You know, Seb and I are here all the time, so Elizabeth can play some more premium members. Yeah, she 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 should play. She should play more. Yeah, so I'm gonna keep following her. Same here. I got her right on my computer. So I will take Tarek. Sounds Norwegian. Tarek or Tarje? No, Tarik. Tarik. Oh, maybe that is Norwegian. I don't know. Oh, I have white. No, it's Turkish. Oh, well, at Tur least the flag is Turkish. Oh, you have the white pieces. Wow, yeah. Deutsche Billy Yomusson. You know Turkish? Um. I don't know who you're talking to, but I do not. I ask you if you know Turkish, actually, in Turkish language. Turkish, <laughs> Yomusun. 
the uh, last year. How many languages do you speak? I know a little bit from a lot of languages. I used to live in Turkey for eight in, months. In which city? Ankara. Hmm. I've never been to Ankara. Okay, it's not the most exciting city on the planet, I can tell you. Yeah, I've only been I've been to Istanbul twice and that's it. Elizabeth knows the London system very, very well. Yes, I Apparently. Wrote, uh, I made a DVD about that. And my DVD was five hours longer than the DVD of Simon. <laughs> so I would just like to troll him about that. <laughs> That's funny. Are you having a blast, Pascal? I am having a blast. That's certainly good to see. Blast much, much better than when I'm alone with you, Sebastian. Right, right. <laughs> good one. <laughs> I'm just kidding around. It's great. It's great either way. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. I mean, uh, apart from the banter, of course, but you're not a sensible man. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I'm not a sensible. <laughs> well, I, well, I mean, like you, do, you're not like a fragile. I guess that's about. Oh, se sensitive. I'm not sensitive. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Actually, that's. It's funny because in French, it's the same thing. Sensible means like, yeah. like sensitive, but in English, yeah, it's the same in, in Norwegian. Yeah. Actually, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. the same in German. That's why I know why he does a mistake. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Germans. I mean. Germans with bad English education, they would also say sensible for sensitive and they would confuse it because in our language it's the same like in Norwegian. Mm. Oh, come on, let's sacrifice. There's no sacrifice. I like this sacrifice. Okay, the sacrifice, of course, is not precise. It looks pretty precise to me. No. He takes only five. Bishop takes. Yeah, okay. I have, of course, huge compensation, but it's not like that you play bishop f6, so it's not like that great. No way. It looks promising. And sometimes they might be listening to us talk, which is good. Um, you know. So they are afraid of our sacrifices, and we claim that yeah, we sacrifice. Yeah, exactly. All of Eyes when they're actually totally rubbish. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You have to use it to your advantage, but it can also it could also hurt you, you know, sometimes. <clears throat> so you played the London system in slow games, also, right? Uh, not anymore because I understand that this is already a bit too much. I like to play it, but unfortunately everybody prepares. So for the women's German championship, I don't think I can come up with that. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm, obviously I'm not asking you to tell us your secret uh, preparation, but... Uh... No, it's not like my secret preparation. In Rapid and Blitz, I think London is great because, okay, I know the basic plans and that's more than enough to be successful in a way mm -hmm. but otherwise i think it's already okay well, this was also a rubbish move of course of mine <laughs> jesus why am blank that true rubbish moves <laughs> that's a good one pascal oh yeah sure You can actually change your username. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, I can change it for you. <laughs> Ellie is starting to have some uh, checkmate ideas. Yeah, but they are not working, unfortunately. Do you like when uh, you, uh, you're called Ellie? Ellie is a way of uh, for the Germans to have a short name of uh, Elizabeth, but in English, of course, it's not Ellie. But in English, they they do like short. Uh, they make they Liz say, or Liz. yeah, Lizzie, Lisa, Lisa. You know. Oh yeah, Liz is the way. It, yeah, yeah, you're Liz, right. Yeah. 
But they have like a million like ways of yeah, putting down names. Agreed. With my name, and there's not really much that you can do. Like you know, <laughs> Pascal. Yeah. <laughs> P pass. Um, yeah, and like me with Bass as well. I've heard. No, that but you they can do Seb. Yeah. Oh, Basti. We say sometimes Basti. Oh, yeah, Bast Bastian. That's true. Basti. Is Sebastian a popular name in Norway? Yeah, but I think it's international. In Germany, it's quite popular too, I think. Yes, we have a lot of Sebastians. Not so much anymore. In, in, in my generation, we had a lot. I remember in school, I had at least two Sebastians in my, in my class. But now I hardly hear the name of Sebastian. Got a bit out of fashion in Germany, I guess. Now yes, Lucas uh, and Maximilian and Leonard are the Leonard, names. Really? Uh -huh. I didn't know that. Okay, Leonard and Leon, we have a lot nowadays. Leonard. Ollie, Ollie made an inside joke that uh, people can call me Pierre. Which, yeah. is, a... <laughs> <laughs> Which yeah, is quite fun. <laughs> yeah. That's the French stereotype, right? Uh, yes, Pierre is a French stereotype. There's a couple of uh, inside jokes there, but uh... <laughs> actually, even at my in my old when I was working in finance, there was a uh, one of my coworkers called me Pierre. Like after I had been there for five years already. Um, so yeah yeah but by, by mistake right yeah yeah by mistake yeah not a, not actually as a joke just by mistake <laughs> in the in the in america you got chad right that's one of those stereotypes yeah chad would be like uh yeah it's one of the one of the stereotypical <laughs> names but it, there's also everything is popular like Alex and Mike, you know, Nick, I mean, there's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of chats, but like Chad is like a typical guy. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. And Florida, Florida people as well. I think they also have a stereotype as far as I've heard. Sure. There's stereotypes there's everywhere. Florida you know? memes. There's some, uh, <laughs> there's some, uh, a lot of stereotypes about Florida in general. But I, I actually I really rather like uh I like where I am now, so Florida is great actually. I like I'm yeah, I like very it close I'm close to the beach. I'm I've, I have a swimming pool. You have a swimming pool? Yes. <laughs> it's lovely. And it's I mean you kind of need it. It's it's like uh during the it's summer cold, right? it's like a hundred degrees every day, so I mean, a hundred in Fahrenheit. It, it, I mean, not every day. It's it, and it's uh, so maybe like thirty-five Celsius or something like that. Are you, do you live in Miami? No, I'm on the other coast. So Miami is on the uh, Miami is on the east coast by the Atlantic Ocean. I'm by the uh, Gulf of Mexico on the west coast of Florida, which is still the east coast of the U.S. but just the west coast of of Florida. Right. Uh, but the beaches are really nice here like probably nicer than Miami beaches. What a lucky man. I live yeah, in cold I mean, Norway. I lived in cold Montreal for many years. So I, I know what winter is like. Uh, <laughs> I think I Canadian winter is really, really cold. It's worse than Norway, I think. Um, I also think it's like minus 20 on average, no? Yeah, yeah. Every day will be... I don't know if, about average, but yeah, yeah, it gets to minus 20 all the time, sure. And a ton of snow. Oh, man. Like many feet of snow. Well deserved, I guess. Yeah, you know, you, you eventually change something up. But Montreal is a great place, though. So I have no uh, no regrets. Nice city, spent... isn't it? Yeah, it's a great city. Great. Uh, yeah, nice people. Um, maybe one day I will be back. Who knows? Probably not, but I mean, I'll be back, obviously, <laughs> just maybe not to live there since I have kids. I like Canada. It was always one of my my countries where I could imagine to move to. Have you have you been there in the last like several years or? 
Only at the airport. Why at the airport? Like, why would you, on your way to where? To St. Louis, actually. Oh. I, you know, like, I thought, like, I'm very clever. I don't go through America. I choose the Canadian way not to have this kind of awful kind of controls. And then, like, on the day of departure, you know, the night before, I, like, someone by chance told me, like, that I need um, uh, not ESTA, but ETA. And I was looking with a horrified face in his and I said, like, but I'm just like in the transit. And they told me, like, no, 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 you have to register for Canada as well. Yeah, and, and was, it costs like five dollars. Or I, I remember people telling me about this. I never knew this because I'm a citizen. But yeah, there's some kind of weird like registration thing, and you got to pay some money. And and I was calling the airlines, and the girl told me, like, okay, don't worry. Usually it takes three hours, but if I'm unlucky, it can take up to some days. <laughs> And I had to fly the next day. Like I had approximately like 20, 20 hours. And I was like making the registration and I was like, I couldn't sleep, you know, I was like looking at the time and praying that I get the confirmation. And, and were you in Toronto or? No, I was uh, flying through. Yes, I was flying through Toronto. Yeah. Well, at least you had a night, so you had a little bit of time. No, I mean, like I had the night in Germany and then in the next morning I went to the Frankfurt airport. But I mean, like in the night, in the night, I was hoping to get the registration confirmation for ITA. Otherwise, they wouldn't let me in the inside the flight from Frankfurt already. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's terrible. <laughs> and I didn't know that I who's shelling Ford. Shelling Ford well, that's, is, uh... It's German. You can you should play against him. He's a good uh, a good premium member. Yeah, he's, he's pretty good. Actually. He's tough. Who is uh, what is the real name of? I mean, because that, I, I, actually, I don't know. I don't know the real name, but maybe I don't know if it's if it's a secret or not. Okay, because I've been there. He's a picture, but I can't recognize him. Okay, I will take him just not to be a chicken. At least I'm white. I can try the London. Yeah, name is Shelling Ford. According to his profile. <laughs> but you know, also Shannon Ford doesn't have a meaning in German language. Right. We have a, we say something in Norway, we say someone is a besser wisser. Uh, that's German, right? Besser wisser is like something like Klugscheiser. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, if I Google, if I Google the name, it might be Julian Bang or something like that. I don't know, if, but I'm not sure. Oh, his Luke. His name is Luke. Lucas. 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 Yeah. Luke. I've actually been to Canada, Pascal. You have in Toronto recently. And did you stay for a while, or? I uh, just a few days. I saw the tower. The CN Tower. Yeah, the, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. so it's, a, it's a nice place. Yeah, Toronto is, Toronto is, get, is great. Yeah, it's uh, really great. My so first I, job had an office there, so I, I went a few times and I played some tournaments there also. I have some good friends. I would like to go back, but it's hard to travel now. In fact, now Canada has closed the border to, uh, to the US, so can't go for a while. But this is understandable, no? Absolutely. <laughs> because we have so many cases in the US. No, yeah, I understand. Actually, I would be allowed to go, but I would have to uh, quarantine for two weeks. And I mean, I don't think I can even go for two weeks. So it doesn't make sense. Did you know that there was an Norwegian guy who walked across uh, Canada, like the entire country, for three years? <laughs> I don't know, but I know Canada is a big country. I did this like uh, when I became Canadian champion many years ago, I did a little tour of Canada, like going from city to city and doing some exhibitions. And uh, I realized it's a big country. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I started on the West Coast and worked my way east. Like, I mean, I actually kind of cheated. Some of the way was by car, some by train, some by plane, some by boat. You know, I did like a little bit of everything, but it's uh, it's huge. So. Yep. He plays chess too. Who? Uh, the guy who did that. He's a, he's oh, a famous really? celebrity in Norway for, for nature stuff. But oh, he's actually cool. a good chess player too. I met him in the Norwegian Rapid Championship in the first round. 
<laughs> that's pretty, pretty good. Pretty you nice. played against him? Yeah. Did you flag him? Uh, no, <laughs> I didn't. I'm, I'm not uh, as fast on the, the board. That's different. I'm I'm slow both over and and uh, over the board and on the internet. I'm kind of slow over the board. I'm not sure about Liz. I'm slow everywhere. But actually, no, no. Actually, I'm I'm playing rather fast in real chess. In that case, I'm not that slow. Ooh. You don't this... like to spend your time. Depends. I mean, like when I'm in shape and I'm like in the spirit that I played a lot of games and I can play fast, but otherwise I'm slow. This has been a crazy oh. game, but maybe he missed that his knight was pinned. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. Really you like... might beat uh, the shelling forward, which is a great force to deal with. Yeah. I mean, I think rook h6 was a blunder. At least it looks to me like a blunder. Now at least I have some pieces up, which is good. Yeah, it looks completely winning. <coughs> good job. He just don't trust me so much because it's not over yet. Uh, well, he has less than 30 seconds. I can't imagine you getting flagged, but you never know, of course. So who knows? Position is also completely winning. Yes, but this doesn't mean anything. Okay, I mean, at least now a lot of pieces are hanging. And he resigns. That's well, good. That's you gain 47 <laughs> points. <laughs> Jeez. You want me to adjust your rating? No, no, it's okay. <laughs> I lost all my rating in the Steinitz Memorial. Because I was playing not in my best state. But now I have only people below 2,800. Let's put it this way. So you're you're in Berlin now, Elizabeth? No, I'm in my parents' home, but I will go to Berlin. Like, I mean, I'm moving to Berlin in about... I mean, objectively, I could have moved already, but I have an empty flat with no kitchen and nothing. And if you order furniture, it usually takes 10 to 12 weeks. Yeah. So since like my kitchen will not come in the next two months, I decided like, okay, why should I bother and be quick about that? Yeah, of course. No rush. Have you been to Berlin, Sebastian? I haven't been there actually. I've been there many times. Beautiful city in Germany where my sister studied as well. Ah. No, Berlin is great actually. It's a very unique city because, okay, it, it, used to be like two cities of east and west so we have a west center we have a east center and we have the so-called border between east and west at checkpoint charlie so in this regard it's unique you don't have it anywhere in the world that the city was split no into two areas Not yeah sure. i don't know i don't know if there are comparisons i was so also in hamburg Hamburg is not uh, it was not split by two city I mean by uh, by an American a Russian sector let's say but Hamburg is a very nice city as well just in winter you should avoid it it's too wet and windy I was there yes. I mean I was there for uh, uh, the trust 24 uh, annual gathering or something like that uh, and uh, I thought it was really nice but I don't think I saw sunshine once like it was just cloudy all the time and but which one? Winter, winter, like it was January, I think. Yeah, okay, but this is like, I mean, Hamburg, you should see now, like in July, August, June, May, it's really nice when it's sunny, you can walk along the Alster. This is a kind of area with a, where there's a river. And this area is very nice in summer. But once summer is over, you will suffer, okay? My dangerous right doesn't want to ride with me anymore. <laughs> So I'll take someone. How can I abort? Okay, I'll abort. Yeah, I think we actually, there might be some other people challenging. Yeah, there uh, are. Pascal, maybe. No, not not me. I mean, <laughs> There's I, a search. Stubby. Sure. 
search and stubby and whatever stuff what is stubby meaning is this stubby i actually yeah. don't I, i'm not sure stubby i'm not yeah i'm not totally sure stubby could be like a word related to having like a beard kind of but i think this is actually a, um, a character i'm looking it up now sergeant stubby a dog and the official mascot of the 102nd infantry regiment so it's an army related dog but i guess a famous very famous dog i didn't know this story actually but we live and we learn okay stop. this is a good variation for you well the thing is like i mean my move order was wrong so i mean like instead of bishop g4 he should have played c4 queen c2 bishop f5 queen c1 and black is doing fine but bishop g4 is a blunder because i can take on c5 and now white is good actually or not bad let's say i mean not worse i think even rather like a bit better okay e6 is a blunder as well you should take on f3 and play e5 at least now i'm just a pawn up for nothing <laughs> looks good though yep. this this is the uh i feel like this pawn structure has a name maybe the caterpillar I don't know the name. I just remember <laughs> this pawn structure and the slav a lot, but with reverse colors. Yeah, yeah. I think it's the caterpillar. Well, no idea. Never heard anything like it. <laughs> no, I made it up actually. I, I don't know if it's a thing. I just thought it deserved an animal name. So Sebastian, are you a Krentmaster? I mean, sorry. Uh, I mean, I am actually. Okay. So, so yeah, not so not so strong. But you are about to become a Krentmaster, right? Um. Uh, well. Um, well, if uh, that's the goal, I guess. But it's uh, not looking like it will be anytime soon. Are you a professional chess player, or you do something else? Well, you could say that I am, but I do a lot of other stuff than just 24. Okay. That's but I mean, like, basically you're working with chess, then? Yeah, you could say that. But... Okay. Because, uh, okay, in Norway, actually, you have to earn pretty good money to make a living because it's super expensive, actually. Oh, yeah. Even more than in Germany. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's a bit, bit rough. Beer in Oslo is like 10 bucks. <laughs> yes, yeah. no, I know what is the beer meaning actually. Like, I know that Norwegians like to do their own beer. But you know, like, I can order a beer in a restaurant. I can say, like, and beer versus snill. Yeah. And I think they will understand what I want from them. Yeah, versus snill is bitte. That's great. Mm. Impressive. But I learned the basics like in Norwegian, Jai Ech Veldi, and then there is this really cool name, which is, I don't say it because you will laugh and people will understand. I will look like, I will look like I'm weird. <laughs> oh, really? And well, now like, I'm interested. Know, now I must hear it. And like this is like, Jai Ech Veldi Kort Ida, or something like <laughs> okay. that. So you have to help us, you have to help the audience understand what's going on. Well, uh, I can write to you in private. <laughs> yes, that's the thing. It's too much. I mean, this word is substituting a word which starts in English with an H and continues with an O. I see. <laughs> I see, I see. That reminds me of the good old menage à trois in French. Okay. Which is the yeah, only... menage à trois. <laughs> that's a beautiful word though i have to it say is, yeah it's you know no matter <laughs> what it means it's a good it's a good word or chat as well that's another one i know because i think oh. it also means luck but am i wrong no you, you said <laughs> it means two things it means two things it I means think. two things but i think you're you're wrong about the 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 other one but uh the luck part yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> I mean, I know the meaning of that word only in one sense. Well, it, it can actually mean a cat. Yes, but it's not used as a cat. <laughs> yes, right. At least when we speak about menage à trois. Right. <laughs> this is this is going uh, this is going in a funny direction right now, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
<laughs> it's uh, it's funny. I, I'm surprised that you knew the phrase in the region, but that's uh, well. I had a good teacher. What you think? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know more than this. Actually, I can tell you. Okay, but, but that's I, that's great. I I love hearing that. Actually, it's, it's no, I must come up with that. <laughs> okay, it's I know. Just... Of course, the basic like "Yeah, else could I." Yeah, ich liebe dich in yeah. German. Yeah. And I mean, like, also, like, I can distinguish between Norwegian, Swedish, and Danish because when Norwegian speaks, I would say, like, yeah, I can't come, yeah, I can't come uh, uh, till die, Ida, something like that. So they would sing it like an upside down. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, it goes, yeah, it goes like kind of uh, uh, up and down. Like, uh, if you want to, I can try to speak in a Norwegian English accent, then you will kind of get what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's actually, really, that's actually really hilarious. I love the Norwegian, yeah. the Norwegian accent. But you know, the Norwegian accent is nothing else. I mean, the Norwegians are the French among the Scandinavians because they really are singing the language. Yeah, it's true. There's that, that uh, <laughs> there's this rhythmic, rhythmic, uh, yes. yeah. There's also the song, but I don't think it's Norwegian. It's like Öl, Öl, O Mere, Öl, der ich der schönste, die ich wett. You know this okay. song? I think that's a dialect, a Norwegian dialect. Öl, Öl, O Mere, Öl, der ich mein sture Charlie hat. Ja, yeah, yeah. Elf, uh, Kaffee yeah. or Schnaps, Fra Finger, Öl. <laughs> How do you know this? Well, it's like... been a while, but I mean, I have a good memory. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds. It could be an Norwegian dialect, or it's Danish. One of the two. But I think it's. I think it was a Danish song about yeah. like uh, to have more beer. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that. That's a possibility. Past I was like, what the hell is? Going no, this is this <laughs> very interesting. Very interesting discussion. Um, you know, I think Elizabeth likes singing also, so you can. Maybe you can get her to sing something in Danish or in Norwegian. No, it, my Danish is in this way actually not good <laughs> or not existent. <laughs> I think I can sing Turkish, Russian, Finnish, but definitely not Norwegian. Oh, wow, that's impressive. The Danish, though, they have a weird pronunciation, so it kind of sounds like they have something stuck in their throat when they talk when they're talking. So it's interesting though, because Norwegian and Danish is very similar in terms of writing, but Norwegian and Swedish is more similar in terms of speaking. And can, so can you understand, like can a Norwegian understand both like Danish and Swedish normally or not necessarily? Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. you can. And, and it's, it's usually easier for Norwegians for some reason. It's like for Portuguese and Spanish. It's easier for the Portuguese to understand Spanish, I think. Maybe the next game, the next game that uh, Elizabeth plays can be hand and brain. And who is my brain? I do, it can be it can be Sebastian. Okay, as long he does. Now, I mean, he can try to tell me the pieces in Norwegian. I'll pretend I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> You could play the guitar and Seb sing. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have my guitar somewhere, I think, in the background. Oh, oh your my. guitar, yeah. That would be that would be lovely. But my guitar is like, you know, not tuned, I think. As last time I tried to tune my guitar on the stream, it was <laughs> a disaster actually. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I, I when when I did we did an interview during the Steinitz and you um you you did the yodelay right? How do you say that? Yodeling, yodeling, something. Yodeling, like that. yes, yodeling. yodeling. <laughs> I have wanted you been, to do the course. Have you been practicing still? Or? I mean, I I was supposed to attend the course, but then I got fever and uh, my tonsils were swollen, so I had to cancel it. And then, then like there was no new course offered, so I have to wait to do my yodeling course. All right. I mean, I don't know if Sebastian can yodel also. Oh, I'm no. not sure what I mean. Like, do you know what actually technically it means to yodel? Uh, I shouldn't know because they do that in the north in Norway. I mean, like, basically, like you have a head voice and a stomach voice, and the head voice is used, for example, in opera music. So they have this kind of. I mean, like, or even higher. Though you need your head voice for that, 
and the stomach voice is something like you hear a lot used in pop songs for instance for example like these boots are made for walking that song is like Willis sang in stomach voice style and yodeling basically means you mix these two things in a very fast way and then you get this kind of effect of this yodeling the the guitar in the background is becoming popular right like uh, ollie was mentioning in the chat but grischuk uh sasha grischuk when he does the commentary there's usually a, a guitar in the background and i know they were trying to get him to play it on stream but he hasn't uh, he hasn't accepted yet so but, you know like my guitar playing is very bad i mean like i'm using the guitar only to sing but i'm not using it to play because i cannot really play the guitar i can only play house of the rising sun maybe on the guitar and then well, actually that's a good song yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah well <laughs> i haven't drank any wine to be <laughs> in a shape to do that. <laughs> Sebastian, do you, you know that song? Uh, What's that? Like which song? There is house a the house rising. in New Orleans. Maybe you can oh, sing. Yeah, I, I think I've heard like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they call the rising oh, sun. See, but I like more uh, Dean Martin <laughs> type of style. Elvis. Uh, do you know Dean Martin? Yeah, yeah, I know Dean Martin. Yeah, oh. I, I like that style quite a lot, or or rap, for that matter. <laughs> yeah, I I hear you. That's yeah, that's less uh less suitable for the stream. You know, it's just not as as uh, melodious. But yeah, 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 yeah. Rap is a French not Pascal. Suitable. It's like les portes du pénitencier. <laughs> yeah, les portes du pénitencier. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. The yeah. I know like, this song in French. Des chante. Have you heard it? What is it called? There's a chante. I think it's a disco song, or this Ella Ella song. Oh yeah, Ella Ella. Ella. Yeah, that's, a, that's, <laughs> that's a, a that's an old that's an old one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Same if there's a chante. It's from Kate Ryan. It's the same artist. Oh cool. All right. So are we doing this? Are we doing this hand and brain, or are we singing? <laughs> well, <laughs> then I would say like you start in French. I continue in German, and then. Uh, Sebastian has to sing The House of the Rising Sun in Norwegian, and then we have a deal. But I haven't heard it, I think. Or you can sing it also in English. I don't know how it goes. That's a good excuse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. So. Do you like any Canadian singers, Pascal? You have this Alan Morissette or something. Alanis like Morissette. I mean, yeah, yeah. not really my style of music, but <laughs> yeah. she's fine. And there's a lot of Canadian artists and bands, and uh, um, but I've been in the United States for like 20 years, so I mean, and I feel like those artists that get really famous, it's almost the same. They end up living in the U.S. a lot of the times, but uh, yeah. But, you know, I grew no, up. I grew true. up when uh, like Celine Dion became like incredibly famous. When I was a kid, she was like just pretty much singing only in French in Quebec. And so for us, like when she became so famous, it was kind of like, oh, wow, like that's so weird because she was singing these like funky little f songs in Quebec that weren't, you know, it's a small market there. It's a small, pretty small population. And so, um, and then she made it like humongous. Um, so it's yeah, I, I used to do like, I used to do the um, the Titanic song as a karaoke uh, kind of joke. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to do that one today. <laughs> 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 you can well, do the uh, other one, the the one by Alanis, the one by like. Thank you, a... India. Thank yeah, yeah. you, terror. <laughs> yeah, there's a there's also ironic. I think is one that they do like. But isn't it ironic? Don't oh yeah, think, that like that one. They do they do a lot in karaoke. Um, yeah, yeah. And I used to do for karaoke. I would do like Weezer stuff like that. Do you know Weezer, uh, Sebastian? It's, it, you know, it's uh, obviously beyond. So. It's when you were, before you were born pretty much, but sort of an alternative rock band. They had some good, uh, good songs. Cool. Well, I did that some water. That's the one I did. Okay. That's pretty old too. Yeah. Yeah. You have some, uh, some interesting, uh, interest, interesting. Yeah. Interests I, mean, I really like that music, honestly, like, There's not a lot, of, a lot of people on my uh, on my age who listen to like the Temptations and stuff like that. So Jim uh, Reeves, Ollie, Ollie is really pushing the uh, the House of the Rising Sun. He's he put the lyrics in the chat. 
for you oh, to for you, for you to follow. But I have to listen to it first because I have to know how it goes. I, well, I know. I, mean, I know. If you listen to it, don't play it on the stream because I I've been told. It's copyright. To be, yeah, yeah. I yeah, know. we have to be careful about that. So I'm not even sure my guitar is tuned actually. Well. No, it's okay actually. Well, there you go. All right, Sebastian, on your cue. What? We're starting, no, actually. No, I... <laughs> well, I have to listen to the song first. Okay. But I mean, like, uh, you are okay, starting... Okay, so how about this, then? Ellie, you play a, You can play, like, a one game while during which, like, Sebastian can listen to the song without playing it on the stream. And then after that, you know, we can go. All right. And it's in French, too? No, no, it's in yeah. English. No, there's English, there's a French version from Shawnee Holiday, and then there is a German version as well, of course. Oh, okay. Well, there are some good German songs. But okay, I'll, I'll give, it a, give it a shot. But if it's too far from my style, you're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> I think you can just, just be like a background, you know, you can do... I mean, Elizabeth is going to be the main singer. I'll oh, just boy. be, uh, you know... Sure. Well, well, we'll we'll see how it goes. Just a sec, then. And I think I think this band didn't have too many other like really famous songs. It's one of those bands that has really this one song is is super famous, and there's not really any other. Yeah, from the animals, you mean, yeah, right? Yeah, the animals. I don't think there's too many other famous songs by them. No, it's not, actually. No other famous ones, actually. Wow, that's brave. That's very brave. You should never take an H pawn when there is a rook on H one. That's because he that's... wants he wants to hear Sebastian sing as well. So Sebastian is already like practicing the song. I don't know. Or actually, the chat is already singing it, so it's yeah, fine. Yeah, the chat, the chat is is uh. It's well prepared. I need the words actually because I don't know. I definitely don't know all the words. I know like the, I know the first. Uh, in French or in English? No, no, in English, in English. I don't know. I've never heard it in French actually. I know that it exists, but I don't really. Um, yeah, I know it in English. There is a house in New Orleans. Yeah, they, they call it the Rising Christ. Sun, and it's been... it's been the ruin of many poor boys. And God, God, I know I'm one. I know I'm one. My father was a tailor, or my mother was a tailor. Yeah, my mother was a tailor. She my father was a gambling man down. A man down in New Orleans. The only thing a gambler needs is a suitcase and a gun, and the yeah. only. Thing I'm he's satisfied is when he is all drunk. But usually when I sing the song, I sing it in German and nobody can check whether this is correct <laughs> or not. So I'm out of the lyrics in this way. I can hide well. But chat will help with the... Yeah, I'm going to... I might struggle with some of these... Uh... I wish I could listen to it, but if I listen to it, then the, then it will be playing on the stream. I think so. I can't. No, you cannot because of copyrights. Actually. No, I know. That's. I just mean like if I wasn't hosting, then I could do it. But because I'm hosting it, then I I can't do it. Actually, a lot of uh, accounts had faced serious problems using not copyright. Yeah. Actually, lately it happened this year. Even though I don't know the rules, like I never use any music because I don't know what I can do and what not. Yeah, I don't. I, I'm not a. 
I don't really know anything about it other than what I've been told here. Mm. Okay. Hmm. You brought a lot of pieces close to his king. Yes, I'm trying my best. I'm checkmating quickly. And I'm back. Sebastian was. What did you think of the song, uh, Seb? I was boring. <laughs> boring. Yeah, that that's just like it's uh, just boring. All right. <laughs> I, boring. I prefer "Moody Blue" by Elvis. If you've heard it, I'm um, not sure if you have. I don't know. If, I don't know. I mean, I probably have heard it, but I don't know off the top of my head. <laughs> that's a good one, Elizabeth. Do you have any other other, other uh, guitar specialties? Uh, not really because actually like my guitar knowledge is very very poor All usually right, so I... then it's gonna be that one johnny cash do you, do you know him a fire no way <laughs> <laughs> oh but yeah like there's a lot of others as well there's that one like you find it very very i find it very very easy to be true <laughs> probably i can only i think it's called i walk the line i'm sure oh yeah yeah, I walk. yeah. That's, a I... so that's a good one yeah but actually, like, I don't know. I have to see the, the, the chords of the guitar, and I don't know them by heart. All right. So we're going to do The House of the Rising Sun? No. <laughs> but what, what does, what's the alternative? I don't know. There has to be, like, yeah, without, like, you, you can do, like, a karaoke version of something, right? No, I don't think so. That's, I was told that we can't, you can't play. Yeah. If we play it ourselves, then I think it's okay. But, uh, you know. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, so it has to be. It has to be something that that uh, <laughs> that is known on the guitar. Right. Right. I don't know any other songs. It depends on the on the chords. If the melody is easy, probably I can do it. Well. <clears throat> but for Elvis, probably we gotta decide. We gotta decide <laughs> before it's uh, before it's too late. Elizabeth is gonna run out of time soon. Yeah, that's true. You can sing like um, it, it can be like uh, a cappella. A cappella, yeah, it can be a cappella. <laughs> a cappella. But what what songs? Okay, so then let's decide in the next like two minutes what song is going to be possible. Um, you can throw some ideas out there and see if if uh, she agrees. <laughs> right, but I'm not sure if you actually pick karaoke on YouTube. Uh, I don't think they always uh, copyright it though. I made one with Pavarotti, but I didn't co copyright that. I yeah, was, but I had one don't... problem with one that I did. So um, that was a Sp Spice Girls, I think. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> what? Yeah. No way. So, mm -hmm. Did you seriously think one to be on stream? Well, it was after a bet, after a lot losing a bet, of course, not by choice, but yes. Damn. Yeah, it was wonderful. <laughs> So, all right. So, what are we? I think we just got to do the House of the Rising Sun because you know, that's the uh, that's the song that Elizabeth knows. At least uh, this one I know with our preparation. This is true. Otherwise, yeah. and uh, some some Norwegian songs. All right. <laughs> so, so let we'll it be I mean, by the Beatles. That's the suggestion. Wait, let it be, but I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Find myself in times of trouble. No. <laughs> See, like I have already like a problem with the third accord. Find myself in times. Raise me up is another one, which you've heard. Mother Mary comes to me. No, this comes to me. It's more or less fine. Yeah, you. Yeah. That, that can work if if Sebastian, you know, really insists. I mean, that's fine with me. I don't. I don't mind either way. Yeah. That one, well, Sebastian, would you would sing? I'm not picky on songs, but that one was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't even know the lyrics of when I find myself in time. time of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me. Mother Mary comes to me, comes to me, speaking world of wisdom, let it Okay, I think I'm missing one chord, which I don't know, but... Um... 
So this must mean I'm disgusting, but it just me. I'm just stop singing. <laughs> well, this one. <laughs> that, that one, I don't know if we need a guitar. Yeah. <laughs> yes, this is, I think, Eminem, no? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. Don't you think, Pascal? <laughs> I mean, it's it's not, but it's not really, it's not singing per se. It's a little bit different. It's more like, uh, I mean, I, I like rap, so it's, but it's not, it's not really uh, about your vocal cords too much. You know, it's more about the ability yeah, to yeah. lyricize. As a matter of, matter of fact, I did rap in the club at the the, ba the ball at like, school. Oh, cool. Very at cool. the prom, I mean. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was that was funny. Teachers and everything. Oh, I'm sure you you uh, you were a big hit. That was actually a huge uh, huge success. Yeah. Sebastian has also done some cooking videos. He's famous for. I can I, Amazing Grace. I think I would make by lyrics. Oh, Amazing Grace is. <laughs> I'm not doing Amazing Grace. That's just too much. <laughs> too much. But, I'll do House of the Rising Sun. I'll do Let It Be. I mean, you know, but we got to decide do... because the stream, you know, otherwise the stream is going to go on forever. Or you could do also the Seriten om det vette mit dem steppen when thousand man ha hu ha. Have you heard it? Chinggis Khan. It's a great song. Ching Chinggis Khan. Yeah. It's a weird song, but it's funny. Which which one of Genghis Khan actually? Moscow is another one, right? There's Moscow, there's Genghis Khan, there's Hachi Halefoma. And there's Lorelei. There are a lot of songs actually. You have Elena Fisher as well. Once you're starting with German. Oh someone said someone suggested Hallelujah. That's actually a good uh that's a good suggestion. Yeah, yeah that that's a good suggestion. I guess you like Jack Buckley. By uh, no Leonard Cohen, I, Leonard Cohen. I was thinking. I, oh yeah, him as well. Yeah. How how can you give me the melody? Uh, yeah, sure. The Jeff Buckley version certainly has to be easier to play on guitar. I only remember the refrain, but I don't remember. The yeah, I'm star. trying to. It goes. This is difficult and yeah difficult. it's not easy it's not easy actually it's too much mole inside yeah um some other suggestions here in the chat are can't help can't help find falling in love yeah leonard cohen is a canadian as someone points out someone points out la, 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 la. Elvis is great, of course. <clears throat> okay, this is more or less fine. Okay, I gotta I mean, find the lyrics. I gotta find the lyrics to that. Yeah, same here. I can't remember it. I grab some water. Be right back. Sure. He needs to uh, get his voice prepared. Yeah, it's difficult anyway. House of the Rising Sun was the easiest part. All right. Well, let's just do that one and then you, you know, you will lead and we'll just try to help out a little bit. <laughs> Is that okay with you? Yeah, sure. But I will sing in German. Okay. I'll say New Orleans and New Orleans in German is New Orleans or no? I just can't be too loud because my parents are sleeping. Oh yeah, but... of course. I saw yeah, it's it is pretty late. Oh, 
but I don't hear anything. Well, it's hard in the German <laughs> if I <laughs> I can I'll try to go along, but it's hard. The house in New Orleans they call the rising sun. It's been the ruin of many a poor boy and God I know I'm one but you have a melodic ear actually my mother my mother I don't know actually like yeah that with a mother <laughs> now the only thing a gambler needs no is a soup great because anyway i can't sing so loud because i will wake up the neighbors <laughs> maybe the next time maybe the next time we'll start earlier you know yeah another stream and i will prepare something like uh, for for sebastian <laughs> oh yeah thank you thank yeah, you guys you. you guys can coordinate for a beautiful a beautiful duet in norwegian language like yeah. <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> Like, uh, time to say goodbye. That's a beautiful one. Yes, but this, I think, actually, <laughs> lyrics... Actually, I'm, I'm just curious. I will just try if the lyrics are easy or not for this. I will find out quickly. It's okay, that's, but that's, it's that's Conte Partiro, right? Like in yeah, uh, yeah, 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 okay. <laughs> you have a good voice, Pascal. <laughs> there we go. That's as much price, bro. Oh, price really hard. Yeah, but okay, you have to well, he's a, he has a huge, huge range, right? Like it's it's hard to have that kind of a range. I think it's, I mean, I, and the thing with me is I I, I can go pretty deep, but then it's hard for me to switch. Like I, I don't really, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm not a singer, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me neither. But but it requires practice, like everything else. Yeah, for sure. Well, actually, the range, the range you cannot influence. You can influence the strengths of your wrench but you cannot influence the wrench itself you can test the wrench by the with the piano or the help of the piano then they will tell you what is your wrench and once you know your wrench yeah. you can practice it in terms of improving it by strengths but you can definitely not uh, okay with you can get higher at least maybe the guys can get deeper in my case you can train to be higher but then still it's within your wrench ali is asking for yesterday do you know do you know the tune to yesterday I oh man, not that one. Yes. <laughs> Yesterday. But this Beatles, is a uh, I, this is an unpopular, unpopular opinion, but I think they're overrated. The Beatles? But, well, yeah, yeah. Who knows? I don't think they're that good, honestly. You know that <laughs> they had a they had a lot of meaning for when they were there, and I think you know, I don't know. It's not. I'm not a Beatles hater. I've just, I've just heard a lot well, of the, like kind of bands. I think Beach Boys much much better. Honestly. Beach Boys, ah. Oh. Yeah. Some surfing in the USA. Surfing USA. Yeah, but they have also the Coca-Cola. Bermuda, Jamaica, girl, I want it. Yeah, <laughs> you know that's that good. At Kokomo or whatever. That's a really good song. <laughs> Actually, like yesterday is very difficult in terms of... Um, um, For me, it's melody. high. It goes high. 
No, it's not about the. It's not about even the height. It's about the fact that uh, you sing like yesterday, and then you have to go in a very difficult range, and yeah. you can go absolutely wrong if you don't have an absolute ear, actually. Yeah. So it's a difficult song, especially like when you're not professional singer. Yeah, yeah. I th I feel like I would butcher that one completely. I can whistle. I can whistle the tune, you know. Mm. But I can't. Uh, sing oh, you can it. whistle. Yeah. I actually, actually can't whistle. <laughs> I sort of messed it up. It's not easy. Totally right. No, probably not. The beginning, I mean, the, the, the second part was right. The beginning was not cold. cold. <laughs> now it's good, actually. But you have an absolute ear, Pascal, actually. But who's whistling now? Simon and Garfunkel. <laughs> <laughs> Same. Okay, it. but you have some you have some music talent because your sister also has a music talent, Pascal. Well, I play I played music for many years, but then I stopped. You know, um, but I I enjoy music a lot. I'm just not I you know I don't haven't done it in a long time. But I um, yeah, who knows? I played piano. I actually tried to play the guitar and I found it incredibly difficult and I just stopped after a few lessons. <laughs> I didn't give it too much of a chance, but your your voice is great, so. When it's practice, it's okay. But actually guitar is much uh, much easier, I think, than the piano, it objectively as an instrument, but maybe I'm wrong. Piano requires much more well, practice. Yeah, but it, just the basic technique, like piano to play, if you know the notes, you can play the notes, basically, but guitar, like, you know, you can't, you can't even do like a, a simple thing without like, really kind of understanding the, the technique, you know, this is true. It's more technical. This is true. Yet, for me, piano was harder than I mean, like, I never like learned any of these instruments in a very professional way. But I prefer clearly the guitar in terms of Difficulties. <laughs> Ollie is saying maybe some night wish. That I actually really cannot. Maybe Sebastian is going to be good with that one. <laughs> that's, that's a crazy voice, though. Yeah. Yeah, like a Rammstein as well. Like, oh, yeah. It's this voice. That's but really Rammstein, impressive. Rammstein, actually, like, there's one song which is called Ohne Dich, and this is actually possible to sing. Oh, okay. Well, that has just but... very few notes, no? Like, it's just like, maybe I'm wrong. No, on a dish is not hard, actually. It's yeah. like, uh, it's just like, I mean, it's very simple in comparison to the other Rammstein songs. It's a ballad, and I think it's one of their nicest pieces. But and like, Du hast is a rough one. Du hast is a rough one, yes. But oh. It has a double meaning because hast has two meanings. Du hast. You write it with a double S or with one S. Du hast, Mish. <laughs> but it's more like voice acting than anything else i would say that that's one honestly i mean most of the songs of uh, rammstein are only about lyrics and not about melody but this ballad ohne dich it's actually also about melody i'll have to listen to that make sure i have the right song in mind i'm not sure that i do i mean it's like ich werde in die tannen gehen dahin wo ich sie zuletzt gesehen Und der Abend wirft ein Tuch aufs Land, weh, mir, oh weh. Und die Vögel singen nicht mehr, ohne dich kann ich nicht sein, ohne dich. Mit dir bin ich auch allein. It's actually not so difficult, but I'm not sure you know this song. I don't think I know I've it. Never heard I may have heard it, but I don't know. It's one, I mean, for me, it's one of the nicest of Rammstein, but... Usually people who like Rammstein, they want something rockish. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but it's nice when they do something different. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Pascal's more like rock. Yeah. Yeah. Or or rap. And now Frozen. <laughs> <laughs> do you know the songs from Frozen? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But you should make your son listen to Eminem. I think I listened to Eminem when I was eight he's years little, old for the first time. Well, he's three. Like, I mean, it's a little bit young, maybe, but... 
Again, you know. have to start young. You can start with Exhibit or something like that, or DMX, if you know. Yeah, him. yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I mean, we can try. We can try. He's gonna, think he's gonna love it. I've been trying to focus on him watching and listening to stuff in French because that, because uh, here he gets obviously exposed to English a lot, and so I'm hoping that he'll speak French also. So he's right now he does really well, but it's you know I have to keep it up. So the French always does well with the ladies. Well, that's not really the point, but it's <laughs> it's, it's it's that's a secondary. It's what you call a and uh, unintended consequence, but it might be a good one. So, but it's you know that's yeah, not yeah. really the point. <laughs> just it's good to speak different languages i think uh yeah i agree it's a shame that i never learned bulgarian honestly yeah but you speak in you, you ended up speaking many languages so it's fine oh thank you by the way elizabeth i think i saw you on, on the karaoke in the european club cup oh jesus that was one of the <laughs> very embarrassing evenings but actually <laughs> My performance was nothing in comparison to the performance of Valentina Gunina and the Arbiter <laughs> dancing in the background. I still have the video of that. <laughs> uh, I can agree, humbly agree. But you've that. done. Because but I, I was there. <laughs> where where was it that you did the the the? Because uh, I think I saw it on the internet, like with a uh, Sutovsky that you sang. Uh, there are many occasions when oh. I was singing with Sutovsky. I mean, the thing is, like, whenever like. People ask me to sing. I usually ask Emil because then I can be sure that I'm not in the uh, center of attention anymore. So people will look to him and I can hide. Yeah, so this yeah. is perfect. <laughs> yeah, he has, he's great. He's got a big, uh, big voice. And... Yeah, I mean, first of all, he has like a very professional voice. And second yeah. of all, he's enjoying it much more. And I'm a little bit shy. So yeah. actually, like when he's singing with me, then I feel more secure in terms of I just hide behind his voice. <laughs> yeah, and he, he has a big voice, so it's possible to hide behind it pretty easily. <laughs> well, actually, the funny part is that soprano in the highest tunes is still louder than his yeah. bass baritone, so I would overtune him in certain heights, actually. So it depends pretty much on the song. And did you train? Soprano did you train as our as a singer, like when you were a child or? Uh, no, I had some lessons actually. I have a lyric voice and I can sing like in really high tunes, like kind of opera songs or musical songs like memory, stuff like that. But it's not professional because my breathing technique is not great, let's say. But the volume I have, let's put it this way. Yeah. I tried soprano once and that was really hard. But you are a boy. I mean, like you are a guy. So, I mean, like, <laughs> yeah. like a tenor. Yeah, it's, it it's hard. Tenor, yeah, tenor. Or, I don't know how you even say it. Tenor. If you're higher than that, then I would say, like, you must be below 12 years old before you get this, <laughs> the voice break, actually. Yeah, that's true. But <laughs> I guess you've heard the O mio babino caro one, right? That's pretty light. But I'm not sure if it's the absolute lightest. Okay, but some some guys actually they keep the high tunes, but it's yeah. very very raw actually. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's very difficult. I I practiced a few times just for the laughs, but it's uh, too difficult. I mean, professional teachers they just listen to your voice, like speaking, and they would already tell you what you are, which is to me very impressive. I mean, the first time I was entering a room with a professional teacher, she told me like. You're a soprano, and I said, like, how do you know? And she said, like, oh, I'm listening to your voice, and I didn't even expect that my voice was quite high, you know, for a lady's voice. Let's put it this way. And this is without you mean without you singing, like you're just talking. Yeah, and she's, yeah, singing, yeah. yeah that's singing, that's yeah. talking. They would tell you what you are, and I was mm -hmm. impressed because okay, sometimes you know, like you you feel that the person speaks very deeply. But I mean, like listening to you and Sebastian, I'm not sure like I can put you already in a category. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't I couldn't put you in a category, but uh, now you've said it. But yeah, I couldn't for sure. Pascal, you have a pretty deep voice, don't you think? You could do like I guess uh, so. Dean Martin type of voice, maybe. Maybe, maybe. I don't know. Um, yeah, I actually don't know what I am, but uh, yeah. Something like that? Something like that. Say. I'm probably in a deeper, not a tenor, I think, but maybe. Uh... I mean, if you are a tenor, then you should be able to sing um, um, the song from 
Phantom of the Opera, this famous song when they are on the boat. The Phantom of the Opera is there. This is tenor. That's all right. But then you are tenor actually, if you are able. I'm not sure if I'm able to. Da, 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 da. No, he's singing da, 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 da. yeah I, I have to i don't really remember how it goes i'm obviously doing it wrong <laughs> i was doing the first notes maybe okay and then uh yeah ah oh, it's it's great yeah but i i like the phantom of the opera actually i went to see it i went to see it on broadway like 20 years ago it's very nice in England now. In in London, they had a very nice group. I mean, like in a very nice musical of the Phantom of the Opera. I mean, the actors were absolutely great. One of the best shows I've ever seen. Even so, the theater was a catastrophe. Hmm. So the singers were great, but the theater was not great. Let's put it this way. But it was okay because the actors kind of compensated in a good way. That's cool. <clears throat> you should rename the show. That's not a bad idea, actually. To have some sort of karaoke session. Uh, like, I mean, let's say the a, guest has to do like a challenge every time. It can, time be, a, they have it to can sing, be a like, segment. Um, it can be a segment, you know. Yeah, um, you could have like, you have to do, you have, you have to sing one specific song, which is yeah. hard to sing. Like, Take On Me, it's a pretty difficult one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really hard one. Talking away. <laughs> yeah, it's, pretty, it's it's really hard because the the, the chorus is like insane. Me on. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it, it's difficult. So that's why I always have done like Dean Martin when I do the karaoke, and I do it while sober as well. That's <laughs> that's great. That's even better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's. Yeah, I, I guess it's better technically. All right. Well, we're we're almost done here. Seb, do you want to play like one last one minute game? Beat me one more time, just for good measure, and then we'll end the show. Uh, all right. I got a banter actually in half an hour. Oh, so do you? You, you would you rather not play then? No, I I, I would play, always. Okay. So let's do one last game. I have to challenge him somehow. What's your favorite rapper, Pascal? I don't know, actually. I'm not like I, I'm not very good with favorites in general. I just kind of listen to different things, and uh, yeah, I don't know if I have like a number one. Probably Eminem, if I had to. All right, I'm playing F4. Yeah, uh, I could in a way agree, but but I like DMX a lot, and I think Eminem is kind of his songs are pretty bad. Like the new songs are not really that great. I, I think Recovery was the last really good album. And it went downhill from there. I hear you. It's always, yeah. hard. It's always hard to talk during the one minute games. Yeah, it's I know. Harder. It's lots of times so that you can just relax. Yeah, that's true. I need to just take a chill <clears> pill. <throat> take a chill pill, as they say. Yeah, crap. I did not see that. Yeah, no, that's that was my deep, deep plan. <laughs> All right, but it's okay. No, I know it's okay. You're going to you're going to be just fine. Yeah. Hopefully. That's the Pascal move. Yeah, yeah, always trade queens against you. <laughs> yeah. Even if kind of annoying. Even if it's stupid, like as it was here. Yeah. So you have that. This move. Wow. Yeah, oh, that's goodness. ballsy, isn't it? Are you already winning? I mean, white. Winning doesn't mean I'm going to win. I know. Although but maybe it's this, mate, this right? one, this one, it might be. Yeah, it's mate. All right. I never beat Sebastian, by the way. So this is like very, very rare. I'm going to celebrate if I do win. Oh, crap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Oh, oh yeah. it's. Good game. All right, let's end the stream right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm. Uh, well, I think we made it. We we made it. We made it a good show, though. I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad we got to hear um, Elizabeth sing. It was great to have her join us today. 
she'll be back doing, yeah, doing I stuff on her own back. and and uh maybe the happy hour again if she if she uh she wants to stay up late but uh oh i think she loved it <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right well you know i'm gonna say i'm gonna say thanks to everyone for joining us thanks thanks seb as always i know uh, these are uh, long days for you uh yeah well thank you pascal and uh thank you for this initiative oh yeah for sure and uh yeah elizabeth's great to have you on chess 24 and hopefully you'll be back you, you'll guys. be back very soon thank you guys thank right. you so much see you everybody Bye-bye. Good night.